is a special production of ESPN on ABC. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, home of some of the most frenzied, frenetic fans in all of college football. But today the Buffaloes try and put a silencer on those very fans, but sometimes the power of red is invariable. The game plan is in place from the respective brain trusts, ready to be executed. A sellout crowd on hand. Underneath a benevolent sky, welcome everyone to Rivalry Week presented by Remington. And here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's the Colorado Buffaloes and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. It's college football presented by Best Buy. It's a series that began back in 1898. And now we take a look at our Dr. Pepper Big 12 update. Big news of the Big 12. Nebraska has already clinched a spot in the conference championship game you'll see next week right here on ABC. But the question begs, who will their opponent be? Will it be Texas or will it be Oklahoma? Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Bonnie Burnt joining us in just a few. Happy belated Thanksgiving from all of us at ABC to all of you at home. Now, you can't overstate the great coaching job that Bill Callahan has done at Nebraska this year. He has disembalmed this program, brought it back to life to the point where, David, they might be one of the hottest teams in all of college football right now. Well, you look at the Huskers on defense, one of the best front fours in college football, two great playmakers at the defensive end position. But what strikes me is the balance on offense, a rebirth of the running game, a running game that really harkens back to the 80s and the 90s. It's given this passing offense under Zach Taylor great ability to take shots down the football field Taylor has come of age as a vertical passer for the Cornhusk you talk about the 80s the 90s you talk about Nebraska quarterbacks Turner Gill Tommy Frazier but now the prototypical Cornhusker quarterback is a Zach Taylor type number nine overall in total offense he's the trigger guy and a seminal moment for the Cornhuskers in the Callahan era two weeks ago. Zach Taylor had to bring his team down the field in the final minute of the football game. Made terrific throws, great decisions. Zach Taylor, it's really tough to think about where Nebraska football would be without Zach Taylor right now. Callahan has said that this program would not be where it is right now were it not for him, Taylor. He has done this in two very short years. The Cornhuskers ready to take the field. It is senior day. 19 seniors playing their final home game here at Memorial Stadium. At Nebraska, the lineage is always a who's who of college football, but Colorado carries a very impressive resume as well. Two-story programs, one holiday tradition. Nebraska and Colorado. The coaches and players that have transformed this into a riveting rivalry will tell you that the magnitude of this one runs the entire emotional gamut. The victors bask in the luminous afterglow. The vanquished, meanwhile, are left emotionally bankrupt all in the span of 60 minutes on the Friday following Thanksgiving. It's a Big 12 North battle. The Buffaloes take on the Cornhuskers next. This ESPN production is available on ABC HD presented by Dish Network and we are back at a raucous Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln, Nebraska as we go downstairs to Bonnie Bernstein. Mark Colorado comes into enemy territory after an inspirational visit from the Buffs all-time leading receiver Michael Westbrook stopping by practice on Tuesday to talk to the players about holding their heads up high. Essentially he said the win-loss record doesn't matter. The struggles you've endured don't matter. If you can come in here and beat our arch rival it will save the season and create momentum heading into next year Bernard Jackson said basically Westbrook said go out there and kick butt which Jonesy that's exactly what they're going to need to do in order to avoid just their third 10 loss season in program history yeah, good point Bonnie the good news for the Buffaloes is that the visiting team has won the last four games in this series Although Nebraska has won seven of the last ten overall. The Huskers will kick off under a beautiful sky here at Memorial Stadium. 
The weather unseasonably warm, some 53 degrees here at kickoff. A slight wind down in the field. The forecast overcast for the rest of the afternoon. But uh, usually, David, at this time of the year, we see uh, some snowflakes down there. Not the case this time. Well, uh, unseasonably warm, and that really plays into the hands of this Callahan offense for Nebraska. Zach Taylor loves to spread the ball around. Couldn't be a better day to throw the football. Terry Washington back deep for the Buffaloes. Mason Crosby set to kick off. Pardon me. Nebraska kicks off, and this one will go into the back of the end zone and come out to the 20-yard line. Take a look for the in-flight players for Colorado. Bernard Jackson has been growing leaps and bounds in the last couple of games. Right of force on defense. Crosby a force with his place kicking. And this offense really struggled, especially over the first half of the season. A passing game that was pretty much non-existent. But Bernard Jackson has improved in that area. You go back a couple weeks to Iowa State, threw the ball very effectively, 15 for 19. And as we'll see this afternoon, Mark Jones, he's one of the scariest quarterbacks with the ball in his hands, a real threat with his feet. There's a look at Crosby, who could be on the verge today of setting a new field goal distance record. Jackson throws it out of bounds, incomplete on first down. And now take a look at our uh, starting lineups presented by Outback Steakhouse. Jackson throwing incomplete a few moments ago for Colorado. Williams, Barnett, and Gear. Three forces that are going to have to be a tangible factor today. And really a weak point, a group of wide receivers and tight ends that haven't been a strength. Gear's been coming along a tight end, but you look at a green quarterback, a, a tough group in terms of their talent at wide receivers, and it has not produced many yards or points for the Buffaloes this year. Second down and 10 for Colorado. This is Holiday, who attended Nebraska for a little over a year, makes it out over the 20-yard line, brought down by Corey McEwen as we take a look at the black shirts. And up front is where they really make their mark. Moore, Cryer, and the group, Carriker, a force on the end. And the seniors, all of them, up there on your screen, playing their last home game. Nose of the ball resting just beyond the 21-yard line. Third down and nine. Jackson fires complete for the first down. At the 38-yard line, that's Nick Holtz, who's more known for his uh, place-holding duties with Mason Crosby. He picks up 15. Now we talked about the struggles of this wide receiver outfit for Colorado. And this lineup is dotted with walk-ons across the board. Holtz, a former walk-on, and a nice little seam route sitting in between those zone linebackers. Hugh Charles running it out of the eye out near the 40-yard line. Got about three. Charles, a 5'8", 190-pound junior. He went for 45 yards on the first play of the game last year against Nebraska. Led to a Mason Crosby field goal. But after that, it was all bad news for the Buffaloes. They went on to lose that game 30-3. And that set the stage for the 70-3 defeat in the Big 12 Conference Championship game the subsequent week. Looking for a little payback against Nebraska this afternoon. Second down and seven, a two tight end formation. They run it again. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage was Hugh Charles stopped by Barry Cryer. The defensive ends for this front four for Nebraska. They get all the headlines, but you look at the guys playing down inside to Gundaro and Cryer who made that last play. They've been playing terrific football inside for Nebraska. One of the top defensive front fours in college football. Third down and seven coming up. Jackson has never played in front of a crowd this imposing before. Under pressure and sacked back at the 32-yard line. Adadarongo. That's the Cornhuskers 22nd sack of the season. Fourth down coming up for Colorado. Yeah, this is a scary group to work against. DeGundaro getting pre pretty good penetration right off the snap of the football. Beat Daniel Sanders, the right guard. Kalalo into punt. 
and Brixby back deep for Nebraska standing at his own 26 yard line. Lalo averaging over 43 yards and this one not a good one. There's a flag down as it dribbles harmlessly down to the 42 yard line. Have to wait and see what this flag is all about. Major Colbert got a piece of that punt. And the penalty is going to go against the Buffaloes. Been a struggle for most of the season for the guy you saw a few moments ago on your screen. Van Hawkins, the head coach of Colorado Buffaloes in his first year, the former head coach at Boise State for so many seasons. Holding 34 on the kicking team. Penalty is declined. First down. And Major Colbert, he's going to delay, and then he's going to come clean. And you don't want to make mistakes early. In Lincoln, Nebraska, gets a team that is as hot as any we've seen in the last two or three weeks. You know, last week, good time to mention, David, that in their last game against Texas A&M, they got a nice play on special teams from Barry Turner, blocking what could have been a game-winning field goal by the Aggies. Come up with a partial block here. First and ten, coming back the other way. Brandon Jackson in the backfield takes the handoff, and Jackson powering his way out near the 48-yard line. As each, we check in with John Saunders in New York. Mark in the Verizon wireless update. Jamarcus Russell trying to lead the upset for LSU over Arkansas. 47 yards to Craig Davis. Nice move. Over the 10, over the 5 for the touchdown. And Arkansas has since had a touchdown called back. All right, John, John back, back here, here, second down and four. They run it. A nice run by Brandon Jackson. Got the first down. Take a look at our impact players. Zach Taylor has rewritten the Nebraska record book, completing almost 62% of his passes. Purify has really come on of late, and Carriker force on the defensive front. A couple bookend defensive ends for Nebraska. Purify, a tall, imposing target at six foot four. That could be a factor today against some of those smaller DBs for Colorado. First down and 10 for the Cornhuskers. Nice play fake, but well read by the defense of the Buffaloes at the 47-yard line. The stop made by Taya Filler. Like that Dyson made the stop. Now let's take a look at our starting lineups presented by Outback Steakhouse. Taylor, Dane Todd, and Matt Herrian. Three seniors on offense making their final appearance here at Memorial Stadium. We're going to run it over the right side of that offensive line. Forward progress down to the 42-yard line. Jackson again got about four on that play. Simply getting the start today and making the stop on that play. Simply getting the start in place of Thaddeus Washington. But it's the guys up front right there. Right, Ligon, Nicholas, and Boy Doe that are amongst the leaders in the nation against the run, 25th in the nation nationally. And you look at the 2-9 and nine record for Colorado, and real, what really gets caught, lost in the shadows, this Colorado defensive unit, one of the top three in the Big 12. In fact, one of the top 25 in the country. Third down and five for Nebraska on this their opening drive. And Jackson was stuck. He's going to wind up coming down right around that first down marker. Nicholas and Sipley making the stop on the play. That's going to be close. They're calling in the chains for a measurement. And Bill Callahan bringing a new style of football to Lincoln three years ago. The West Coast offense so different from what these fans have been watching. Bob Devaney, Tom Osborne, Frank Solich over the years. And, and when you think West Coast offense, you think passing first, but don't be fooled. <laughs> and Nebraska, just like the old days, they're going to come out and they're going to test you on the ground. And with this group of tailbacks, as we see they pick up the first down, this group of tailbacks and a big physical offensive line, they're able to test you. So the traditionalist here in, in Lincoln might ask, what in the name of Mike Rogier is going on with this West Coast <laughs> offense stuff? Don't sweat it, folks. They'll still be running the football. 
I came in here in 1983 with the UCLA team, and I don't want to see Mike Rozier ever again. Fourth and in inches. They're going to go for it. They're 10 of 15 on the season on fourth down. Check that. They did get the first down. And Brandon Jackson is going to be stopped up at the line of scrimmage. Dyson making the stop on the play. That was a first down. And with the Cornhuskers wrapping up the Big 12 North, and the big difference over their 8-4 season a year ago has been the running game. It's really taken a lot of pressure off Zach Taylor, the passing offense. And they've improved by close to 100 yards per game in the running department. Huge improvement. Under a minute, eight minutes to go here in the first quarter. Nebraska scored on their first three possessions in their last game against Texas A&M. Off to a decent start here. Jackson in space. And he's brought down just shy of the 32 by Dyson. Dyson's the leading tackler on that Colorado defense. Uh, he might be their best linebacker. He's a three-year starter and uh, a key component there defensively. Well, this defense has featured players at all three levels. You have Abe Wright up front, defensive end, and then Dyson, who is a sideline to sideline type of guy, can bring the helmet. A very vicious hitter when you give him you know some room in space and then of course Ryan Walters at the free safety as good as you'll find in the Big 12. Third and five for Zach Taylor. Buying a little bit of time but not enough sack back at the 42 but it might have been a face mask in the process. Abraham Wright who is third in the nation in sacks might have had his 12th and a half there but will it stand. Yeah that's a bad break. Russell foul face mask 15 yard penalty. Down. That was the big one, too. And that's a tough break for Colorado because you know Abraham Wright, he did not have any designs on getting a piece of Zach Taylor's face mask on this play. And he beats Murtha off the right edge. And it, it didn't look like a face mask to me. It looked like he had a piece of the back of the helmet. Right there, yeah. We're going to march off the long one. And the ball is going to be placed at the 17 yard line. First down and 10 for Nebraska. They come out in an empty formation. And now Jackson settles into the backfield. Boy, you talk about the Cornhuskers being a big formation team, quote unquote. Five yards. We saw about 20 formations on that sequence, David. Well, <laughs> they shift people around. And Bill Callahan, of course, he brings this offense from the Oakland Raiders, took the Raiders back in 2002 to Super Bowl 37. And he gives you a lot of window dressing before the snap of the football. Shifts, motion. And he gives the defensive coordinator a load of prep time during the week just to play defense before the snap. First down and 15 after the infraction. Jackson the lone back. They toss it into the boundary. Jackson brought down inside the 20 at about the 19, 18 yard line. Clock running with 618 to go here in the first period. Nebraska in its first sequence offensively. 19 seniors playing their final home game. Nebraska already guaranteed a spot in the championship game next week. The game you'll see on ABC. Bill Callahan, though, keeping his troops motivated during the course of the week and telling us that our players understand the magnitude of this rivalry. And we want to finish up an undefeated 5-0 season in the North Division here. And six and one at home. We have a timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back, everyone, to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. College football presented by Best Buy. Zeros on the scoreboard. And Zach Taylor, boy, what a season it's been for him. And you think back to his journey in college football so far. Started off at Wake Forest. Never really felt at home there. Transferred to Butler Community College in Kansas. And then was won over by Bill Callahan's staff. Tosses it to Lucky. Marlon Lucky. Drop down to the 15-yard line. Let's check in with John Saunders back in New York. 
Sports Center in game. Mark, Arkansas and LSU. LSU with the lead, but Casey Dick goes 21 yards to Marcus Monk. He fights his way across for the touchdown. They went for two, no good. So LSU still leads that game 14 to 12. Meanwhile, Oregon State is on the board 7 0 over Oregon. Mark, back to you. All right, John, third down and eight. Looked like Lucky might have been trying to throw on that last play. Jackson in the backfield now. Taylor wide open underneath to his tight end. None. None scores. Terrence Nunn puts the Cornhuskers on the board first. Wide receiver David running a nice route underneath and the extra point now to follow. Nunn with his third touchdown catch this season, the tenth of his career. And Nebraska jumps out in front on a very impressive opening drive. It's seven and up. And for Zach Taylor, touchdown pass number 23 on the season. Records just keep coming and coming for Zach Taylor. We'll be back with more. You're watching ESPN on ABC. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Presented by Best Buy. Wrap up the wow this holiday season only at Best Buy. Infinity, makers of the all-new 306 horsepower G. Design beyond machine. Remington titanium shavers. And singular, raising the bar. And 22 is late getting over. He gets mixed in the... Back here at Memorial Stadium, a look at uh, Terrence Nunn, who cut that touchdown pass just a few moments ago. Leading wide receiver on the team with 33 catches coming in. That capped the 10-play, 58-yard drive, eclipsing about six and a half minutes on the clock as you look into the eyes of Terry Washington, number 10 for Colorado, back near his own end zone for the kickoff. The Buffaloes trying to counter on this drive in this possession. Compton kicking off. Washington looking for a seam and he makes it out near the 25 yard line well, let's take a look at our best by playbook and when you're facing man-to-man -man defense on the outside you want to have receivers crossing here's Harry in the tight end he's gonna get a vertical threat on the flag route and then none he's gonna go ahead and come across and keep an eye on Sims the cornerback. Go ahead and roll it, guys. The freeze it right there. Lorenzo Sims caught. And no way is he going to make up the differential. Great route by none underneath. Precision on offense. And now Mel Holiday running between the tackles for the Buffaloes, brought down by Tier Green. Holiday gives. Colorado a little bit of a different look there in the backfield in contrast to Hugh Charles. Holiday a little bit bigger at 5'8", 205. Ran for a season high 126 yards in their win over Iowa State last week. Yeah, Mel Holiday is the type of back that will test you north and south. Great pad level. Came to Colorado. Much storied career trying to find his way onto a team. Former walk-on. Now Hugh Charles back in the ball game. Charles spinning nicely. First down and then some. Houdini's in the house. Hugh Charles broke out of the pack and makes it down to the 28-yard line. First down, Buffaloes. Finally tackled by Grixby and Jones. Just when it appeared as if they had him bottled up, he bolted for 44 yards. Yeah, this is a tribute to Hugh Charles keeping his legs alive. And Charles, one of the few players on this Colorado offense with game-breaking ability. And not a very tough back running through tackles, running through traffic, but you get him free in space. And look out. Buffalo's threatening now. They're going to run a reverse here. Barnett. And he put it on the ground. It's loose. And Colorado fortunate to get it back at the 27-yard line. And a couple of flags down in the play, too. 
Bernard Jackson recovered the loose ball. They lined up with Byron Ellis in the backfield and he handed it off to Barnett all for not though. Now we have to check the flags with Dan Hawkins and his offense never short of trick plays and talked to him earlier this week he said hey we're, we're always going to call a couple funky plays offense number 77 illegal block in the back that penalty is declined personal foul face mask number 58 on the offense that penalty will be enforced 15 yards from the previous spot repeat first down and that's the center mark fenton and fenton been hurt by injuries this year remington finalist a year ago Keep a look on the left side. There's a block in the back by Tyler Columbus. Look at Bernard Jackson out there putting a hat on hat. And getting a hat across. Well, hat on knee pad anyway. <laughs> First and 25, a beleaguered looking head coach, Dan Hawkins. Mel Holiday, the deep back out of the eye formation. And a little motion up front on the offensive line for the Buffaloes. This one. Is against Ketch, number 46. He was at the top of your screen on the line. This has been one of the rougher campaigns we've seen from an offense in the Big 12 in a long time. I mean, this team went five games deep into the season with only 10 points to show in second halves of all games. An offense is very much the signature of Dan Hawkins, going back to his days at Boise State. But they come in 102nd in the country in total offense. Ellis is the deep back in the offset eye formation. And Ellis gets the call here. Nice carry. Ellis breaking it down to the 37 yard line. Tackled by Shanley and Steinkuhler. Folks, tomorrow night the Trojans battle the Fighting Irish at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The latest installment of one of the greatest rivalries in college football. Once again, this game will have huge BCS implications. And after last year's finish, this is one you don't want to miss. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Part of Rivalry Week presented by Remington. Think they could top that game from a year ago? <laughs> might have been the best. Might have been the best one in the history of that long rivalry. And Jackson keeps it himself after faking the handoff to Ellis. And Jackson is about six yards short of the first down. Andre Jones making the stop on the play. He picked up 13 yards. The struggles of this Colorado offense have been well documented, but with the addition of some more effective running of the football, and Bernard Jackson becomes pretty dangerous. I think he's one of the the most dangerous quarterbacks in the college game with the football in his hands. And he's always a threat to snap off a 30, 40, 50 yard run on you. During his career, Colorado is bounced around from quarterback to wide receiver to running back and now back to quarterback. Third and eight, Hugh Charles is the back. And Charles gets the call here, picks up the first down, plowing his way down to the 13-yard line for the Buffaloes. And he picked up 13. Hugh Charles with some determined running. And some nice work up front by the Buffaloes. Jack Tipton, the right tackle, got a nice block on this play. And the Nebraska defensive coordinator, Kevin Cosgrove, he has to be worried about what he's seeing here, Mark Jones, early in this football game. The Buffaloes establish a run threat. They can do a lot with Bernard Jackson and his legs off play action. Al Holiday now the deep back. Jackson back to pass, wide open. Touchdown, gear. The freshman springing open. Uncontested, unwatched, nobody even close. That's his third touchdown catch of the season. And boy, we told you at the top of the show, Bernard Jackson continues to improve, albeit here late in the season. Now you see further evidence of that with his seventh touchdown pass of the season. A disgusted looking defensive coordinator, Kevin Cosgrove, on the sidelines. And Mason Crosby, perhaps the most potent and lethal place kicker in all of college football, in for the extra point, drills it through. And we are tied at seven apiece. Bernard Jackson 
Laying it out there softly for Ryan Greer, rewriting the freshman record book for Colorado. We'll be back with more right after this. There haven't been many smiles on the sidelines this year for Colorado, two and nine overall, but they earned those smiles on the sixth place, 75 yard drive. And Ryan Greer was the first freshman all time to lead the team in receiving. Freshman or redshirt freshman, sixth place, 75 yards, and a 14 yard touchdown pass to Gear. Marlon Lucky and Brandon Jackson back for the kickoff. This is Lucky who drops it. He's brought down at about the 16-yard line. So one more look at that pass to Gear. And Dan Hawkins has always been very progressive as a play caller coming out of Boise State. Three tight ends. He's going to get a vertical threat here. And then Gear is going to be lined up as a fullback. And he'll run a wheel route out of the backfield. Bernard Jackson, that was nice action. And Gear gets lost along the sideline. It takes a running game to set up that play action. Colorado moving the ball very well on the ground on that last drive. First and 10, see if Zach Taylor can counter here. He has the poise that shows that he's a son of a coach. Taylor almost intercepted at the 25-yard line. And for more on Taylor, let's go to Bonnie. Well, Mark, aside from last week's uh, dramatic win over Texas A&M, actually two weeks ago, Zach Taylor really thinks his best memory of a Husker was last year's 30-3 upset over Colorado. He said, I really thought it was the first time last season we were clicking on all cylinders, and our run game was so special. We hit him in the mouth and hit him in the mouth early, and there was nothing they could do to stop us. The next memory he's hoping to make is next week at the Big 12 championship game. He said, there are so many fifth-year seniors who've never had the opportunity to go to that game, and I want to be the one who helps engineer them to a win. Yeah, he's really accomplished a lot this year. And you think back to the conference meetings at the start of the season, an injured player coming off the field for the Buffaloes, meanwhile. That's Ryan Walters, number 15. Back to Taylor. An anonymous Big 12 coach was quoted as saying, quote, Taylor's not a great quarterback, but he's all right. <laughs> I'd like to find out who that coach is and uh, check him on that one right well, now. I don't think he's willing to stand behind that <laughs> quote after the clock drive that Zach Taylor put together two weeks ago at A&M. Second down and 10 coming up. Jackson the lone back. Jackson taking it into the boundary and a nice gain out near the first down marker. Just shy of the 25 yard line. Stopped up by Lionel Harris on the play. We're here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska on the day after Thanksgiving. The traditional rivalry between Colorado and Nebraska series that began back in 1898. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie and Bonnie Bernstein down in the field. Sunday day, unseasonably warm, and there's a look at the cogent numbers so far. Colorado doing a nice job, especially running the ball. They had first and 30 at one point on that last scoring drive of theirs. Jackson again. Brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. Got about four. Harris and Wheatley on the stop. And he picks up the first down for Nebraska. That might be the last play of the first quarter. You know, the key for Colorado on defense, and really the key for the Buffaloes as a team in this game, they have got to find a way to take away Nebraska's running game. If you allow Brandon Jackson, you know, Cody Glenn, Marlon Lucky, talented tie uh, tailbacks for Nebraska to pick up yards on the ground. I think you know Zach Taylor too many opportunities down the field too much balance for this Nebraska offense. That's the end of the first period of play. We are tied at seven. Zach Taylor doing a nice job on the first sequence for Nebraska. When we come back we'll tell you what he has in common with the the Manning brothers. Terrence Dunn was second and nine on his touchdown run. But there was a nice counter by Gear. Back with more after this. One to college football and ABC presented by Best Buy. And there's sunny skies here at Memorial Stadium and Lincoln, Nebraska. We are tied at seven apiece. Ready now for the start of the second period. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie, Bonnie Bernstein down in the field. Zach Taylor doing a nice job at quarterback for Nebraska. It's first down and 10. Knows the ball at their own 30-yard line. Jackson changes directions. Not much doing there. Might have picked up two on the play. Brought down by Dyson. Jones also in the vicinity. Talking about uh, Zach Taylor before the break. 
and what he had in common in terms of summer jobs with the Manning brothers. Well, he worked at the Manning Passing Academy last summer and had a chance to vibe with Peyton, who basically told him, hey, there is no secret formula out there, just a lot of hard work and working on your drops, getting your timing down. David, you're quarterbacking. I guess it is that simple, well, I, or is it? I think you see it in Zach Taylor. <laughs> it, it isn't that simple, but Zach Taylor, you can see some Manning in him in terms of his improvement, getting through his progressions and his decision making this season. There's Jackson brought down from behind at the 35 by Nicholas. Gained four on the play. A long ways to go before you're rated up with Peyton or, or even Eli for that matter. But I really see in Zach Taylor a guy that that distributes the ball well. He's a competitor. And he's a perfectionist. And, and that drive two weeks ago, I know he told Bonnie Bernstein that his his best moment as a Husker was a 30 to three win last year against Colorado. But but fans here in Lincoln will remember that drive two weeks ago, a drive that put this team into the Big 12 championship game. He's looking at a third and four right now out of the shotgun. Underneath open, it's none. And none gets the first down at the 45 yard line. Terrence Nunn, an interesting story as well. He caught the touchdown pass in the first quarter. He's the most experienced wide receiver they have. Interesting in that he committed to Nebraska a few years ago, then decommitted when Frank Solich was fired. Thought about going to Wisconsin at that time, then recommitted to Nebraska when uh, Bill Callahan was uh, persuading him to come here. Terrence, make up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Youngsters often go through that. A little indecision. Kenny Wilson now in a tailback. Wilson got about three on the play. The backdrop for this game, David, really interesting as well. There's a lot of vitriol going on here. Dan Hawkins, earlier this year at a pep rally, was trying to fire up the crowd, which is what head coaches are supposed to do. And here's what he said to them. He said, at 0-5, which they were at the time, the worst days as a buff is better than the best days as a Husker. Just remember that, quote, end quote. Well, that piece of videotape, was all across the internet and was shown to Nebraska players on Monday by their head coach Bill Callahan and uh, that has helped to stir the pot a little bit in some of the emotions in this game. Second down and eight. Wilson with a nice move is going to stop at about the 28-yard uh, line. Pardon me, the 48-yard line. Well, there's going to be a fumble. They're saying it's a fumble. Take one more look at that. Wilson might have put it on the ground. He did. Yeah, Wilson. And the knee does not go down. Boy, that ball came out late. And, and that's a late whistle. It looked to me like his forward progress had been stopped, but they're going to rule it a, a fumble on the field. Lionel Harris, yeah. The play seemed to have come to a halt. But Lionel Harris definitely ripped it out while Wilson was still up. And I'm surprised we haven't at least got a stoppage from our replay officials upstairs but you know and no whistle I don't think you can reverse that call coming back the other way it's Byron Ellis and Ellis makes it out to the 50 yard line on the handoff from Jackson that's a heck of a play by Lionel Harris the safety for the buffs who's come in for an injured Ryan Walters Walters really the leader of that defensive unit and you always want to go to the whistle I thought the whistle came late he appeared to be uh, stopped up for long enough for a whistle to blow, but that wasn't certainly the case. Hugh Charles back in the ball game now, the deep back out of the offset eye for Colorado. Barnett is at the bottom of your screen. Oh. Quick hitter complete to Williams. And Williams picks up the first down at about the 42 yard line. Well, uh, really really has become apparent that Bernard Jackson is settling down as a passer. You watch on that last ball, throwing the ball outside, a simple ball, but he takes a little bit off it, drops a little velocity off the football, puts a handle on the ball for his, for his skill athlete outside. And, you know, he really showed signs two weeks ago against Iowa State, 15 for 19. And I think he's just continuing to develop week after week as a passer. Put up his best week last week, 13 of 19 passing for 200 yards. Trying to sell the play fake, Jackson. Open downfield, Barnett. Incomplete. 
Good closing speed that time by Grixby, who got back there. Second and ten coming up. I'm not sure Grixby didn't get a piece of him at the end of this play. And a nice ball from Jackson to get it to Barnett. Barnett was down the middle of the field on a post route and looked to me like Grixby gave it. Grixby gave him some contact down around the three yard line. Knocked him off course. Second and ten coming up. Williams split wide to the bottom of your screen. Jackson keeps it himself. Trying to get to the edge and pushed out of bounds at the 37 yard line. With 11.04 to go in the first half, Bernard Jackson, we talked about how he's been moved around since being in Colorado from quarterback to wide receiver to running back and now back to quarterback. But the important thing to note there, David, is that he's always been moved in season, so never really had an entire training camp to get used to the nuances of the position. No, you don't have an entire spring, a practice session to get settled down at the quarterback position. Of course, playing against, playing behind Joel Klatt the last three years at Colorado, but you know, with the improvement in the passing game and his ability to hurt defenses with his legs, he's potent. Looking to use his arm here. Incomplete underneath intended for Byron Ellis. And it's fourth down coming up. And Mason Crosby coming into the football game now, the place kicker for Colorado. On the season, he's 19 of 27, and he might be the most prolific field goal kicker ever in college football. Yeah, he bangs field goals routinely in practice over 70 yards, longest in his career 60 yards. I was shocked that he was left off the Groza finalist list. This one's going to come from 55 yards away. He's 11 of 19 career-wise, plenty of leg, and no good. When it comes to kicking them from 50 and beyond with Crosby, it's not if he has the length. It's an issue of left or right. This time, just a little bit off to the right. We'll be back after this. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Hello, I'm Major Gray, commander of Cutter Medevac here in Balad, Iraq. I'd like to wish everyone in Nebraska and Colorado a happy Thanksgiving. Go! And also, God bless the United States. <laughs> well said, guys. And look at some Marines on hand here from the state of Nebraska. I want to send out all our best wishes over the season to our troops defending our liberties and our freedoms abroad and domestically as well. First down and 10 coming up for Nebraska after the missed field goal. Jackson piled up right at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 coming up. Thaddeus Washington making the stop. You know, I spoke to Washington this morning in our hotel. He was down in the lobby, and I said, what does it mean to you to play Nebraska in light of the fact that you guys have a 2-9 and nine season? He said, Mark, this is our bowl game. We're 2-9 and nine overall. It would mean everything to win this game and send the guys out this year on a positive note and be a springboard of sorts for next season for the guys who are returning. Second down and 11. Jackson again, nothing doing again. Good stop that time by Abraham Wright. It'll be third down and long coming up for the Cornhuskers. And you mentioned Thaddeus Washington, the, the middle linebacker. And, you know, it's a bit cliche. The teams that are not going to make it into bowl game, they call the last game of the season uh, their bowl game. But I, I think this might even be a little bit bigger, Mark. And the reason being, Colorado has a 7-5 and five record playing in a low-level bowl game. They don't get to play a team like Nebraska. You know, on the road in Lincoln, right. this Husker team could turn into a potential BCS team. Zach Taylor rolling out under heat. Just got rid of it in time. And it's ruled incomplete at the 45-yard line. Great pressure from who else? Thaddeus Washington. What a series for Washington, number 49 for the Buffaloes. A young man that just a couple of weeks ago had his front teeth knocked out. That time trying to maybe do the same to Zach Taylor. Look at this. And Taylor pays the price on this play. That is a big hit. 
in Colorado. They did, Colorado wants to take away the Husker run and create second and long, third and long situations, and make this Nebraska offense one dimension. Titchener with a high punt for the Huskers. Comes down at the 20 yard line, fielded cleanly by McBride. One yard return on the 42 yard punt, and downstairs to Bonnie with a special guest. We have a, a displaced tennis player, if you will, fifth ranked Andy Roddick. I'm not sure a lot of people know what your Nebraska ties are, so why don't you give us a skinny on that? Yeah, I was born in uh, Omaha, and uh, I, was, I was raised a Nebraska fan. My, my dad's a huge fan, my mom's a huge fan, so it's just in our family. Your crazy travel schedule, how much have you really had the chance to, to follow the Huskers? Uh, this, this is my third time to see a game here in Lincoln, and uh, my first time in a couple of years, so I, I, was, I, was not, I was happy to see a break in the schedule where I could get up here. My analyst here for a second. You know how they've changed over from the option to the West Coast offense. How do you like them being up? I think I'm like pretty much every other uh, Nebraska fan. I was a little worried at first, but uh, when Zach Taylor came in, he really, uh, he really turned it around, and it's effective now. Thanks for your time, Andy. Enjoy. All right, A-Rod with some nice analysis. Ellis on the carry, and uh, boy, you think of some of the famous residents. I did not know, David, that uh, A-Rod was from the state here, uh, joining the likes of Fred Astaire, Marlon Brando, Malcolm X, and uh, Dick Cheney, our vice president, also from the state of Nebraska. Locally here from Lincoln. My first visit to Lincoln was back in the early 80s with the UCLA team, and it was not a friendly visit. But you know what? what one thing stuck with me: this is the classiest group of football fans in the country. Really, the best here in Lincoln. How many times you see them clap for opponents coming off the field at other places? Anyway, they do it here. Ellis on the toss. And Ellis is going to be stopped up at the 28-yard line as we go back to New York and John Saunders. Mark with a Sports Center in game, showing you that the Texas AM Aggies end a six game losing streak to Texas, beating them 12 7. Stephen McGee with the go ahead and winning touchdown. Mark. Back to you. All right, John, third down and three coming up for Bernard Jackson in Colorado. Kansas State hangover for the Longhorns. You can't help but think Longhorns getting knocked off out of that national title picture. They carried it with them an extra week. And let Kansas State beat you twice. Here's Jackson under heat. Almost escaped, but sacked back at the 18-yard line by Turner and Carricker. Those defensive ends for the Cornhuskers have done a marvelous job for most of the season. You can put Jay Moore in that group as well. Fourth down coming up right, for the Buffaloes. Carricker's going to be a bona fide first or second round pick in the draft. And, of course, you have Jay Moore on the right side. And then they bring in Turner. And put passing situations, they'll move character down inside and play three defensive ends. Tough to deal with for opposing quarterbacks. Delalo punting from his own six. Grixby standing on his 35 for Nebraska. And it's a high spiral. That drives Grixby all the way back to the 36, and he got driven by Terry Washington. No return on the 44-yard punt. Zach Taylor will have the reins of the offense when we come back from this break. And it's been a long journey from him. Wake Forest to junior college in Kansas to Nebraska. And it's been a great trip so far. We'll be back with more. You're watching ESPN on ABC. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Wrap up the wow this holiday season only at Best Buy. Chevrolet, America's brand. Chevy, an American revolution. And Outback Steakhouse, let go of the day. Go Outback tonight. Colorado Buffalo's looking for better days, and they can keep in mind that once in a while, even a squirrel gets a nut. Right now, the Buffalo's on defense. Huskers first down in 10 on the 37-yard line. Marlon Lucky is the deep back dotting the eye. Lucky got some room on the edge there. Out near first down at the 47-yard line, pushed out by Dyson. Well, near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Marlon Lucky, a.k.a. Hollywood, but uh, well, his quiet demeanor really belies that nickname from North Hollywood. 
A terrific job by Dane Todd on that last play. The senior fullback for Nebraska leading the way outside. Sets up a short second and one. Nice cutback by Lucky who gets the first down at the 46 yard line and a good block by Harry in that time. Marlon Lucky two years ago came in as one of the top five running backs out of high school. Mentioned he's from North Hollywood, California. He was a high school All-American, was uh, pursued by most of the top programs in the country. Now he is a flashback. I mean, he shows up on film, great pass catcher out of the backfield, and he has the ability to make plays in space. This is a very deep and talented group at tailback for the Huskers. Well, they use four during the course of a game. Taylor looking to throw underneath, complete to Nate Swift. Swift picks up the first down at the 32 yard line. He picked up 14 on the play. Now you hear the term progression a lot when you talk West Coast offense. And when a quarterback goes through his progressions, he has a first choice through a fourth choice. Sometimes he can only get to a second and third choice, but you know, Zach Taylor has been great coming off receivers, coming off deep receivers, and coming down underneath with timing. A nice ball there to Swift on the crossing route. Talk about Swift, and none has cut a touchdown pass. Conspicuous by his silence so far, Maurice Purify. He's the deep threat for that. They hand it off to Lucky. Cuts back and is stopped up just shy of the 30-yard line. He picked up two on the play. What do you make of the fact that we haven't heard that much from Purify so far? And he's been the guy that's been burgeoning so far uh, in the last three, four games, really giving them a lot. Well, there Purify, of course, came up with the big touchdown late against AM, the game winner, and he really is the go-to guy, but he's gonna he's gonna gain some of the attention from defensive backfields and, and the depth across the the field in this wide receiver outfit. Zach Taylor has the ability to go to other guys. Second and eight, we'll see who he chooses here. Downfield, and it's incomplete, intended for none. No flag on the play. Defended nicely by Terry Washington and J.J. Billingsley. None. Taylor now five for eight. None took a big hit at the end of that play. And now Terrence Nunn, I think if he keeps his deep speed, if he runs through the goal line on that, on that play, I think Zach Taylor has him for six. They just run in a seam route. And if he keeps his speed through the end zone, I think Zach Taylor hits that ball. Instead, it sets up a third down and eight. They're four or five on third down conversions today. Brandon Jackson is the deep back in the offset eye. Underneath. And Jackson is brought down short of the first down by Brandon Nicholas. And it's fourth down coming up for the Huskers. He think two and nine. It's Colorado team coming in. And wins and losses don't tell the story of how good this defense has been. You know, Dan Hawkins defense statistically the only two better teams that Nebraska has faced defensively this year were Texas and USC. Buffalo's very stingy. Coming in determined here, Congdon in to attempt the field goal. Out of this funky formation, they fake it. Man open downfield. Touchdown. Barry Turner comes out of the backfield to score. Incredible surprise stings the Buffaloes. These are new days in Corn Husker territory. They don't beat you up with the run anymore. It's all about the West Coast offense and the occasional fake. Gans with the toss, Turner with the catch. You're watching ESPN on ABC. You gotta love that one. Turner defensive end that's right a defensive end with a touchdown catch a few moments ago well and, and they split a defensive end out in a wide receiver position some window dressing 
And Joe Gans threw the touchdown pass. Washington back it away for the Buffaloes. And it's a fumble. It's loose. Still no official call from the referee. Mr. Ken Terry Washington on the return. Fumble on the play. And it's going to be Colorado football. Let's take one more look at that fake for the touchdown. <laughs> How many times do you see a defensive end? Now he's not in the picture. Number 99, Barry Turner split out. Second string quarterback, Joe Gans in the lineup. They're going to bring Peterson in motion. And you know, the Buffaloes. How much time do you have to practice this? And that's Terrence Wheatley that gets beat by a defensive end. Wheatley's one of the best cover corners in the Big 12. Wow. Hugh Charles, meanwhile, runs it out to the 22-yard line, stopped by Stuart Bradley. Yeah, Gans came in in the place of Congdon. And Barry Turner, if you look at his resume, he was a receiver back in high school. Showed a lot of speed getting downfield there. Well, you think he's had some fun over the last two weeks? <laughs> Made the block that saved the game, kept the game alive for Zach Taylor and the offense to come down the field and beat the Aggies. Second down and eight for Bernard Jackson. Mel Holiday the deep back. Three receivers on this formation for the Buffaloes. And flags on the play. Thirty on the offense. Five yards, second down. And Dan Hawkins has to be stunned. And the tough thing about those specialty plays, Mark Jones, is you know the, it runs the gamut. You can get creative, and, and how does a defense, how does a, a field goal coverage unit practice against that play? Yeah. Terrence Wheatley, I don't think Terrence Wheatley believed that Turner could get behind him. He relaxed at the end of that play, and Gans threw a perfect ball. Under three minutes to go in the first half. They're going to run it with Holiday. Holiday running hard and determined. Pushed out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. Three short of the first down. And for more, let's go to Bonnie. Tell you what, Holiday's had this game on his calendar. He told me since last year, he grew up in Omaha. All he ever wanted to do is play in Nebraska. He told me he went to three different tryouts to try to walk on. And the coaches there looked at his tape, his portfolio, watch him, and they said, we don't think there's anything you can do for us. But he said, I'm just going to take that in stride. What they didn't know is that I, I, I set sparks. I create momentum. And he's got more than 35 family and friends here. So that's what he wants to do today, Mark. Now, one of those family members plays safety for Nebraska, Tierra Green. Jackson keeps it himself. Pushed out of bounds. It's going to be close, depending on the spot as to whether he got the first down or not. Pushed out by Steve Octavian on the play. What a story. You know, Bonnie talked about Mel Holiday and how he was not able to walk on at Nebraska. He was enrolled at Nebraska for a year and a half without yeah. playing football. He showed up in 2003. Uh, he started off his football journey at Wayne State. Spent a year and a half at Nebraska, as mentioned, and then uh, never played. Moved on to Boulder, Colorado, and is, uh, because of an eligibility issue, missed out on a year, and this is his final season and this his final game for the Buffaloes. And that's what college football is all about. Stories like Mel Holiday's. Got a tight first. Got the first down. With 2.40 to go here in the first half. You have to be impressed with uh, the fortitude of Dan Hawkins team. Well they could have rolled over coming in here at two and nine hanging in here in the first half. Yeah, they've had some futile Saturdays over the course of their two and nine season especially the first half of that season but they've had a couple bright spots this team played Georgia to a 14 13 game really had Georgia on the ropes down in Athens and the win against Iowa State two weeks ago I think this team is a lot tougher than they were in September Byron Ellis is the deep back Jackson with the play fake still on his feet and Jackson picked up about three yards on the play as we check out our half lack trivia question. This week's question Colorado's riding the longest scoring streak in school history. Thank you, Mr. Duck. And the fifth longest active streak in the nation. Where were the Buffaloes last shut out? When? Well, maybe we can guess when and where. Bonus points. 
I may have to look in that encyclopedia <laughs> they gave us, that ESPN college football encyclopedia. They say it has everything in there, right? You know, if I have about 30, 40 minutes, I'll be able to find the answer to that question in the encyclopedia. Jackson under heat. Went to throw it. Out of bounds. And a flag goes down. I don't think that one crossed the line of scrimmage. McEwen. Grounding, number seven on the offense. Penalty is loss of down at the spot of the foul. Third down. Well, Jackson never left the pocket. He never got outside the tackles, but I think he's he's attempting to throw this ball downfield. And the contact doesn't allow him to get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. You know, if that ball falls incomplete on the turf in front of him, you know, that oftentimes that's ruled an incomplete pass, but because he got that ball out to the sideline, referee couldn't help but call the rule on. Third and long, 21 to go. And they run a draw play. down coming up for coach Hawkins is Colorado Buffaloes and Hawkins talked about the trying season he said he had a one and nine season back in junior college days and thought about quitting at the time wrote down on a notepad a sheet of paper what went wrong versus what went right and the list wasn't as discouraging as he thought it would have been and uh, he kind of harkened back to that experience to get through this year one of the things that went wrong that year, the sprinklers came on during <laughs> practice. He had that as one of the one of the items on the list. Courtney Grixby standing on his own 40 yard line for the Nebraska. Now, this is an opportunity for Nebraska. They're going to get pretty good field position. The two timeouts. And Zach Taylor's proven he can operate timeout under stress. Colorado, first time out of the half. Talalo will have to wait to get this punt off as we will call a timeout as well. Corn fed and hand spanked here in Livingston, Nebraska, folks. We'll be right back right after this. Fourteen to seven with 133 to go in the second quarter after the timeout. And now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Some of the cogent points of the game. We'll look at that after the punt. Lalo with a low line drive spiral. Was it touched or not? Grixby was back there. And it's going to be Colorado. Check that. Nebraska football. If Grixby didn't touch that. Close. Sure came close. Yeah. Pulled back at the last second. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Terrence Nunn with a 15 yard touchdown catch for the game's first score. Jackson countering to gear. A talented freshman setting a record with that catch and Barry Turner the defensive end running behind the secondary on the fake field goal for the touchdown making it 14 to 7 and that's where we stand right now with 122 to go in the first half after that 60 yard punt it's Jackson brought down at the 22 yard line by Boy Doe. Let's take one more look at that punt. Did he touch it? Yeah, it's a heck of a punt, and it really changes Nebraska's thinking at the end of the half. Grixby does not touch the punt, but it, with two timeouts, it changes Nebraska's play calling. Taylor escaping trouble. Zach Taylor getting a little giddy up on, showing some good burst. And a little speed out to the 33. Wheatley. Brings him down after the 11 yard pickup. Now, Taylor is not a speedy quarterback. In fact, he runs just below a five second 40. But what makes him effective running the ball at times during games is his decisiveness. And that first down all of a sudden does put the clock drive back on. Little screen pass dumped down to Jackson. Jackson brought down to the 35, but there's a flag down back at the 24 yard line. Dyson making the stop for the Buffaloes. With 37 seconds to go here in the first half, it's going to go against Nebraska. So that hurts their cause in terms of getting into field goal range at the very least. Yeah, Bill Callahan with the punt, a tremendous punt. Grixby had trouble handling it. It looked like Nebraska with two timeouts had a shot to come down the field and try to collect. Only 76 on the offense, 10 yards, 
first down. Huskers had a chance to collect extra points, but with the holding call, in combination with that punt, I think Nebraska's going to shut it down. First and 20 coming up. Taylor stepping up again, finding himself a little bit of room now. Backside pressure and incomplete, and Taylor went down in a heap at the 25-yard line. The coaching staff collectively calling for a penalty against Colorado, and Taylor is still down on the field. That was a huge hit. George Hippolyte. First down. Hippolyte and Wright there to make the hit on Taylor. And Zach Taylor is very slow getting up, and he took a big hit in the back when he released this football. As a quarterback, you were getting a reaction on the Jumbotron here in Lincoln. As a quarterback, you got to protect yourself. And wow. That's George Hippolyte. And it was late. And Gans now coming back into the ball game. He already has a touchdown pass. He has as many as Zach Taylor. Yeah, you got to worry about Zach Taylor's well-being on that shot. That was helmet to helmet. And Hippolyte. Yeah, George, he's lucky he's still in this football game. Taylor appears to be cognizant and coaching on the sidelines. And that's the type of play where you can get thrown out of a football game. Extremely dangerous play. And the hit came late enough that you have to classify that play as malicious. Taylor's eyes wide open. And Hippolyte on the sidelines, first down and 20 after that play. Colorado in a prevent defense here. And Gans is sacked back at the 14 yard line by Ligon. And just might be the last play of the first half. That's the Buffalo's 24th sack of the season. That defensive front doing a nice job, still very much within reach of Nebraska. It's 14 to 7 at the break. A chorus of boos coming down, no doubt directed at the officiating crew, and uh, had something to do with that late hit on quarterback Zach Taylor a few moments ago. And don't forget, coming up on the Capital One halftime show, John Saunders, Craig James. And Mark May with scores and highlights, and right now downstairs to Bonnie. Coach, what's your take on the late hit on your quarterback? Well, it was just late, it was just a late hit, so we just got to overcome it. On a lighter note, what compelled you to use your defensive end, Barry Turner, as a scoring threat? Well, he's he was a tight end in high school, so we've practiced that quite a bit. We got a lot of confidence in that call. We we trust him explicitly on that particular play. Two quarters away from sweeping the north, how do you keep your guys in tunnel vision? This is tough. They're a good football team. We got our hands full. Uh, we got to come back and do a better job in the second half than what we've done all year. We haven't had a, better, a good second half in recent games, so this will be a challenge for us. Coach, thanks. All right, thanks a lot, Bonnie. So a trick play, John Saunders and the crew. The difference here in the first half, Nebraska with the lead. Bill Callahan, John, a real fox, isn't he? <laughs> and welcome back, everyone, to College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy, Nebraska leading Colorado, 14-7 to as we get ready to start the second half of play. I'm Mark Jones, along with David Norrie, Bonnie Bernstein, John in just a few moments you know one of the turning points in Zach Taylor's career was a couple of seasons ago in spring training camp he took some big hits and won the respect of his teammates at the time he took some big hits in that first half too David well if he didn't have the respect <laughs> of his teammates after those hits he he did after a couple of hits he took this afternoon a big hit early against Thaddeus Washington delivering the ball and then I felt this hit was late and George Hippolyte the defensive tackle he got flagged for a 15-yarder on that play, but Zach, Ta or Zach Taylor, people talk about his accuracy, his leadership, his decision-making ability, but I think it's his toughness that really sets him apart. And so far, the difference in the ball game, a fake field goal for a touchdown, the pass from the backup quarterback, Gans, to Barry Turner, a defensive end. That's right, number 99 on a nine route, right? Streak. Yeah, and he <laughs> snuck behind Wheatley. I mean, Wheatley's one of the best cover corners in the Big 12. I don't think he thought Turner could get behind him, and what a ball from Joe Gans. 
What's at stake you ask for Nebraska well they want to finish picture perfect in the North Division Conference play. They would be 5 and 0 oh, would they hang on and win. Meanwhile for Colorado they've told us that this is their bowl game. They would love to send Nebraska spiraling downward into their conference championship game next week. In Kansas City we go downstairs to Bonnie Bernstein Mark Colorado not a downtrodden team at all in fact quite upbeat coming out of the locker room Dan Hawkins said hey we had a couple busted coverages a face mask penalty in the first quarter obviously that fake field goal that went uh, the way of Nebraska and he said all we got to do is clean it up and we're right in there he said he'd like to see better production on third down defense offensively speaking look for them to change it up a little more in pass protection to try to keep Bernard Jackson a little cleaner in the second half guys Jackson at times has wreaked havoc Bonnie on that Defense for Nebraska. First and ten coming back the other way for the Cornhuskers. Jackson caught behind the line of scrimmage by Dyson. And now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Some of the pertinent points of the game so far and the numbers. Pretty equal. And, and you look at the play calling by both teams. This it's like a bit old school. An old fashioned November Big 12 matchup in the first half 40 run plays combined between Nebraska and Colorado only 16 passes. The only thing missing is the snow David second and 11 play fake by Taylor wide open downfield and it's cut at the 25 yard line by Danny Erickson. Play of the day by Zach Taylor, complete for 57 yards to the former walk on Danny Erickson. And this is a bust in the secondary. And Erickson, what a story. And Danny Erickson, last week, his first catch on that big drive, the game winning drive against AM, first catch of the season. And at the bottom of the screen, look at him, he's just running clean open down the field, a bust by the Buffalo. He had to wait on the ball a little bit. Here's Jackson in space nice straight arm and ridden out of bounds about two yards short of the first down at the 16 nice block up front by Brett Byford he picked up eight on the play talk about it Erickson a former walk on had a key catch in that two minute drill the scoring drive against Texas A&M and uh, so many walk ons on this team getting a ride from coach Callahan and making significant contributions like Todd Peterson he too was pivotal in their victory their comeback victory last week well, we talked about Taylor's ability to spread the ball around and you know Peterson without a catch this afternoon purify without a catch and they're hitting Erickson down the field on a post route Brandon Jackson fumbled and it's loose Colorado has it Thaddeus Washington Pushed out of bounds after recovering the loose pill at the 32 yard line. So the Buffaloes seize back the momentum in one fell swoop, one fumble by Brandon Jackson right here. And Jackson usually pretty secure with the football. I see a little air there, you know, handling the football loosely. And this is a nice play by Mirtha, the left tackle for Nebraska. And Washington would have been gone down the sideline. And Lionel Harris, the safety, came up with the hit on Jackson to shake the ball free. First down and 10 coming back the other way for Colorado. Jackson drills it complete, just shy of the 40 at the 39 yard line to Cody Crawford, number 48. And the Buffaloes had success on the ground in the first half, and, and even though they trail by a touchdown, that success running the football is going to set things up for Bernard Jackson in play action. And, and the threat, with the threat there, Jackson has the ability to change up his launch points to get outside the pocket, and he's always a threat to pull the football down as well. Holiday in the backfield now. Stopped up at the 43 by Cryer. Now earlier we asked you our Aflac trivia question. And it was Colorado riding the longest scoring streak in school history and the fifth longest active one in the nation. Where were the Buffaloes last shot? I'll, I'll guess 
is in Oklahoma. Well, and, and it had to be to a, sometime in the in the 80s. Again, we got to go to the encyclopedia. We'll revisit the answer and get the answer after the play. Pass complete to Crawford again. Crawford has been the Buffalo's most consistent receiver over the last several weeks. He picks up a first down at the 45 into Nebraska territory, brought down by Andre Jones. And the Colorado riding the longest scoring streak. Think about uh, where we are. Okay. I would have never guessed. <laughs> well, at least I got the decade right. It's <laughs> as close as I was going to come. <laughs> that narrowed it down yeah. a little bit to yeah. 10 anyway. You're like, David, you're getting warmer. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Buffaloes. 12 yard pickup on that last play by Cody Crawford. Holiday again. Busting loose between the tackles, Holiday. There's a flag down. Great cutback by Holiday, and he'll score. But will it stand? The grimace and disdain on the face of Holiday as he looks towards the officials might give you a clue about this call. A superb run by Holiday, and it looks like the reaction of the Buffs. It's just going to stand. Nebraska. It will stand. He was at Nebraska for 18 months, but never played for the Cornhuskers. Making a triumphant return is Mel Holiday for the score, wearing an opposing uniform. All right, Paul Creighton. The tight end comes up with a great block on that touchdown, and what a run by a, by a tailback that was not allowed to walk on at Nebraska. <laughs> He couldn't have scripted that one any better. A 45-yard run by Mel Holiday. And now Mason Crosby, an extra point away from nodding this game at 14 apiece. And this all set up by the fumble by Brandon Jackson. They put it on the ground. It started with that hit. And the recovery by Washington. And then Holiday. Well, they might think about making it a holiday back in Boulder if they hang on and do something big here. We'll be back right after this. This ESPN production is available on ABC in stunning high HD presented by Dish Network. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie, Bonnie Bernstein as well. And Bit of a surprise brewing here on the plains of Nebraska. Mel Holiday with a touchdown run 45 yards just a few moments ago. His second of the season knocks the game at 14. And Crosby kicks off from midfield because of the penalty. Cornhuskers J.B. Phillips returns it out to the 24. And one more look at the touchdown run. That's yes, terrific work by Creighton, the tight end. First, he's going to get the All-American candidate, Carricker, and then he's going to move to the second level and take a shot on McEwen. Catches Carricker inside, gets the chip. Leaves Holiday free to cut it up inside. And watch the move that Holiday puts on Jones right here. Just freezes number 25. I mean, that is a super run by Mel Holiday and a great job by a tight end working up front. Brandon Jackson is back in the ball game at tailback. It was his fumble that led to that score a few moments ago. And Jackson with a nice run past the 30 out near the 32, brought down by Harris as we go down to Bonnie. Jonesy, the uh, touchdown celebration continues. <laughs> Holiday came over, stood on the bench, and there's a sliver of a CU fan section right, right near the south end zone. He stood up on the bleachers, waved it off 30, 35 of his friends and family. I don't think even a plow could wipe the smile off his face right now. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, Bonnie, and he ran by Tier Green. The strong safety on that play, who just happens to be his cousin. Second and seven. And a nice stick in the hole by, you know what? Thaddeus Washington is playing unremitting, unrelenting football right now. He's bringing the wood today. And he didn't get the start. Sapili got the start, the true freshman. And Thaddeus had been in the doghouse, Dan Hawkins' doghouse a bit, missed some practices. Nice hit. But he is playing inspired football from his outside linebacker position. Had a couple of teeth knocked out three weeks ago. Came back into the game after missing just a few plays. Subsequently had root canal surgery, but 
Boy, he can smile about his performance today. Third down and one coming up for Nebraska. Oh, and another great stick by Washington. Had his teeth all up in that offense of Nebraska. He sunk his big choppers right into the running back, Brandon Johnson. I think offensive, <laughs> the offensive coordinator, Jay Norvell for Nebraska, he's going to think twice about running this ISO play the next time the Huskers have the football. Might be a good time to go to play action. By the way, the dental work on Washington, very well done. Got a nice smile. And there's another nice hit on McBride, unable to get a chance to return it. Thaddeus Washington. Boy, after these kind of hits, when you come to, your clothes are out of style. We'll be back with more after this. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Wrap up the wow this holiday season only at Best Buy. Hummer, like nothing else. Aflac, ask about it at work. And Verizon Wireless. at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Colorado hanging tough with the Cornhuskers. That's the big story coming in. They were just 2-9 and nine overall. Many people expected a lopsided game. Holiday had a touchdown the last time he touched it. Makes it out to the 34. And Thaddeus Washington had a great sequence of three consecutive plays on that last drive defensively. Nebraska comes back out on offense. I think they're going to have to go play action <laughs> one or two plays to stop Washington from biting so hard on the run action. From the same hometown in high school as Cordell Stewart. Many of you remember that name as far as Colorado goes. Second down and eight. Ellis the deep back out of the offset eye for Colorado. Jackson finds his receiver flag down. It's a first down out to the 43 yard line. Barnett beat Andre Jones on the play. Jones missing the tackle in the process. Now we'll sort this flag out, but that was another nice ball from Jackson. Pass interference number 17 on the offense. Pushed off. That's a 15 yard penalty for big second down. And Barnett gained separation. Unfortunately for the Buffs, he didn't gain the separation legally. <laughs> but Bernard Jackson, combined with this run game up front for the Buffaloes, the work he's getting from the big guys up front, he's throwing the ball accurately, he's making nice decisions. And this was a wide receiver slash running back a year ago. Next year, it's an open competition. That's what his head coach said. But he's impressing right now. There's a look at the penalty. Yeah. Not a tough one to call. Second and 23. Jackson incomplete down the middle of the field. It'll be third down coming up. Nick Holt was the intended receiver, third and 23 to come. We spoke with Dan Hawkins a little bit earlier in the week, and he has remained incredibly optimistic despite this disappointing season for him and his program. And the last thing he said to us on our conference call was, hey, we can pop this thing. We don't know when it'll happen, but when it does, it'll roar. And this would go a long way towards that roar if they could accomplish something today in Lincoln. Well, generally at this level, you better pop within the first three or four years or you're going to be packing. Plenty of time though for Dan Hopkins. No doubt. Flag down on the near side of the field. Jackson is pulled down at the 27-yard line. Looked like a designated quarterback run that time. 8-17 to play in the third Offside, quarter. Offside, 45 on the defense. That'll be a five-yard penalty for Pete third down. Penalty against the Cornhuskers. Yeah, you look statistically at this offense, and Bernard Jackson, I mean, he's very quietly this season crept up the third best rushing performance from the quarterback position at Colorado in the Buffs' history. And, you know, with names like Hagan and Stewart, some guys that have run the ball pretty effectively from the quarterback position up in Boulder. Pretty impressive year for Jackson running the football. 
third and 18 now after the penalty. Jackson hoping to build on the momentum that he's garnered here at the end of this season into next year. You want to be careful with the football. Tie game, a little over eight minutes in the third quarter. Be safe with the football. That's your first priority. Jackson unloads going downtown, and that's out of bounds. Barnett makes the catch, but it's incomplete as we go back to New York and John Saunders. Mark in the Sports Center in game. Jamarcus Russell had just thrown a touchdown pass to early Doucette to open up the lead at 24 12. But then Darren McFadden takes over and takes it 80 yards for a touchdown to get Arkansas right back in this game. Mark. All right, John, now in the punt, Matt Delalo. And he had the benefit of being tutored by John Torp last year, who was a finalist, a runner up actually, for the Ray Guy Award. Left footer. And it's going to be down at about the 35 yard line. The question begs right now, as far as Nebraska goes offensively, where is Bobby Purify? Yet to make his indelible imprint on this game. He wants to be their record breaker. We'll see if he can do it when we come back. I'm Brian Munch, fourth platoon leader for Cutter Medevac. And while Colorado and Nebraska are rivals at the game of football, we both stand united in fighting the war on terror one yard at a time. Thanks for your support, America. All right, and once again, we send out all our support and love to the troops overseas defending our liberties abroad. And first and ten coming up, Maurice Purify. I said Bobby going to break. Bobby, his uncle that recently wrapped up his playing career at Colorado just a few years ago. A few more family ties. First down and 10. And Jackson brought down after a gain of about one as we check in once again with John Saunders. Well, Mark, plenty happening in the SEC. Three touchdowns in 45 seconds. Trinden Holloway takes this and goes 92 yards. This after Darren McFadden had gone 80. 31 to 19, LSU has the lead. All right, thanks a lot, John. And back here, second down and 10 now, approaching seven minutes to go. In the third, out of the backfield, Jackson with a nice move. Stopped up about three yards short of the first down. Okay, so now that we have that the purify thing kind of squared away, and Mo versus Maurice, Bobby, Bobby, family, lots of family ties in this game, but it all comes back to the fact that uh, I don't know whether it's been an issue for Nebraska being able to get some separation. They jump out to leads and then come back to the back. Yeah, against Oklahoma State, they led 17-0, gave that ball game up last two weeks ago against A&M. You know, they jumped out to a big lead. Some teams can't stand prosperity. Third down and two. Taylor over the top for Purify. Flag on the play. Purify makes the grab. It's going to be ruled complete. And there's a look at his mom cheering from the stands. Let's see if this play stands. I mean, talking to Bill Callahan during the week, he talked about his team's inability to seal the deal late in games. And what a catch. Hey, that was a heck of a play by Pass Purify. Defense number nine. The penalty is refused. You know, at six foot four, 220 pounds, has the ability to stretch, to go up for the football, has great natural hands. And you know, Bill Callahan talked about it during the week. He said, in trying to finish games, we have not been very good on third down. We've had third and manageable situations, but we haven't executed. They hit one there. First down and 10. Taylor looking back, purifies way, but instead steps up. And getting back to Purify, the coaching staff talking about not feeding him too much information, bringing him along slowly. He hasn't started the entire season, but at this point of the year, he might be their best receiver. He was playing catch up coming in from City College and Junior College. Well, he's developing as a route runner. We talked about his size, his matchup ability, the play he made against AM two weeks ago, a play that Husker fans will look back on a long time. And Nebraska hasn't been in the Big 12 championship game since way back in 1999. Second down and nine coming up for the Cornhuskers. 
Looking to pass. And it's incomplete. But man, Lucky overshot as his target. He was wide open as we go down to Bonnie. Maurice Purify's mom traveled all the way from California to see her son. How excited was it for you to see him make that first catch today? Oh, you know. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Now, Maurice was telling me you didn't get the opportunity to see him play very much in high school. You were working a lot of nights and weekends. How much does it mean to you to be able to spend time out here and, and, and get the chance to really see him? It means everything. Everything. What was football? What, what did it mean to him when he was growing up? Football? Every day. <laughs> Purify with another grab for a first down. He's got two now, and uh, he was an outstanding basketball player in college, and it shows off robust athletic ability here. Yeah, his big playability has meant everything for Nebraska, and you know, once he threat, he establishes that threat on the fade ball down the field, the big third down conversion. You got to play him a little bit softer on the outside, and he snaps off that out cut on you. Has two catches for 41 yards on this drive. First and 10 for Nebraska, the 15 of Colorado. Boy, there were a lot of moving parts in that play. All start, 76 offense. Five yards, first down. Penalty against Murtha. Starting left tackle. Yeah, this offensive line has played well, and, and it's been shuffled a bit because of injuries for Bill Callahan in the last couple weeks. You know, Byford has done a nice job at center stepping in for Kurt Mann, who you know, was slowed with mono early in the season. And Matt Slauson went down late against AM a couple weeks ago. Carl Nix has stepped up there. And, and then you have Greg Austin. You know, he did a great story for Nebraska. He's gone down. And guys like Andy Christensen have had to step up at that left guard position. After the penalty, it sets up a first and 15. Brandon Jackson, the lone tailback. This might be against Nebraska again. Uh, that was a tough start. 80 defense, five yards, still first down. JB Phillips, the young tight end. 522 to go, and Maurice Purify back in the ball game. He had the game-winning catch. Mom loved it. She was watching last week as they came back to defeat Texas A&M down in College Station. Purify now out of the ball game. Marlon Lucky, the deep back, a bunch formation out to the top of your screen. Three receivers, and they toss it to Lucky. He's looking to throw. Throws it back for Taylor. And a flag down on the play. That's going to be interference against Abraham Wright. Bill Callahan really opening up the playbook a week away from the Big 12 championship game. <laughs> and some specialty plays. Pass interference, 53 on the defense. That's a spot foul, automatic first down. The specialty plays in this game creating some interesting matchups down the field. <laughs> we had Turner, a defensive end, on a 26-yard touchdown pass from a backup quarterback. And now you have one of the top sack men in the country locked up man-to-man -man on a quarterback. <laughs> You can't blame Abe Wright. And he's out in space working against a guy who runs about a five second 40. Thought they'd meet in the backfield, not out in space like that. First down and 10 for Nebraska. Jackson gashing that defense down to the two yard line. First and goal coming up for Nebraska. He got a smashing block up front from Brett Byford. That's a terrific job. You know, Byford gets a block up front. Go ahead and roll it, guys. But watch Jackson set up two cuts back. There's number one and then two, both back towards the center of the field. He is a terrific runner. And combined with guys like Lucky and Cody Glenn, a real potent mix of tailback for the Huskers. First down and goal. Jackson again. Touchdown, Nebraska. Two key 
catches by Purify, aided by Brandon Jackson's seventh rushing touchdown this season. And Nebraska with a six point lead. Congdon in for the extra point. And the Cornhuskers lead by seven points. But this Buffalo team has been undaunted today, unflappable. They've been able to answer. But can they come back from this run from Brandon Jackson? We'll find out when we return. Almost looks like a giant eye chart. A lot of ends. Nebraska, the prevailing color and end, the prevailing letter in the stands here. A sellout crowd of over 85,000 on hand, seeing their home team leading by seven. Washington on the kickoff return for Colorado. Brought down inside the 15-yard line. Let's take one more look at that touchdown run by Jackson. Now we talked about Christensen stepping in for Austin at the left guard position. Watch him get up and to the second level of the defense. He just gets enough of Jordan Dizon. All Big 12 candidate. Creates a scene for Jackson. How about Jackson's power running between the tackles here in the second half? That's been a real big part of their offense. Now it's time for another Jackson, Bernard Jackson, to make a move for Colorado and answer. Hugh Charles is the deep back out of the offset eye for the Buffaloes, first and ten. Quick three-step drop complete to Patrick Williams as we check in with John Saunders in New York. Well, Mark, another Sports Center in game, another one between LSU and Arkansas. This is Felix Jones from five yards out. He just slides his way into the end zone. So we have a game again, 31 26. Mark. All right, John, back here, second down and six for the Buffaloes. Holiday at tailback now. Nebraska trying to put this one away. Plenty of time left, though, and Holiday will be stopped up just beyond the 20 yard line. It'll be third down, about four to go. Adam Carricker making the stop. Carricker making the stop for Nebraska. Well, time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report, folks. John Saunders, Craig James, and Mark May in the studio with scores, highlights from around the country. That's a very pivotal weekend coming up in college football. Nebraska already headed to the championship game. Will it be Oklahoma? Will it be Texas? This is a big down coming up for Colorado. You don't want to give the ball back to Zach Taylor, the type of momentum the Huskers created on that last drive. Jackson, nice move to escape trouble. Wins it. And it's going to be completed the 44 yard line to Williams who nicely came back to make the catch. Uh, Patrick Williams bailing out his quarterback yeah, and I don't think the officials on the sideline saw the hit. It, 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 it knocked the ball free and it's going to be a matter of whether Williams had the ball whether he had possession long enough on the sidelines. Spectacular throw by Bernard Jackson avoiding Jay Moore the defensive end. One of the better defensive ends in the Big 12. And how about this throw? I think that's a catch. And they're going to look at this upstairs, but I think Williams had the ball and made an athletic move before Andre Jones made the hit along the sidelines. Looked like he was out of bounds when he lost the ball. The play is under review. Now he gets the left foot, left foot in. In fact, he has two feet in bounds. You only need one at the college level. Looked like he had control of that football. Remember, there must be indisputable video evidence to overturn the decision or the call on the field. This play under review. Well, Bernard Jackson, a heroic play just to escape the pocket. And Jay Moore coming clean on him. And that was a throw that Bernard made that we haven't seen very often this year. You know, Colorado Buffalo is not in the top 100 in Division I in passing offense. Well documented struggles. Jackson a junior one more look at the catch by Williams. Well he has the ball right there and I didn't see a bobble from either angle from the front or the back. 
I believe he has the ball long enough. Just as he steps out of bounds, Andre Jones makes the hit. I think this play is going to stand. And it is an important play for Colorado to keep this drive alive. They trail here in the third period with 321 to go in the period. Down by seven points. Dan Hawkins uh, runs his program, uh, some say in a very unique break, break, way. Break, 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 Likes break, break. to keep things very informal with his players. His door always open. Uh, kind of like they you, call Mark. him Hawk. Yeah, you kind of like always, you with our crew, Mark. You can always call me. <laughs> you can always I come to my office. I didn't have a chance to welcome you back after a couple of weeks of doing basketball. <laughs> I was worried we'd have to do a refresher. You know, four downs to pick up ten yards. Missed you. Six points on a touchdown. Missed you, but kept a close eye on you, man. <laughs> but yeah, Coach Hawkins. Uh, and like he said earlier to us, uh, he says we can pop this thing here. We don't know when, but it'll happen. And when it does, it will roar. Well, he popped it at Boise State. And Boise State was a division you know, one two way program for a long period of time. And, and then they stepped up into Division 1A, had some very lean years. Some very talented coaches, though, have come through that program and dispersed mainly in the Pac-10. But you look at the 53 victories that Hawkins wow. had over five years taking one more look back at the the catch by Williams Williams the uh, fastest receiver that Colorado has but still kind of learning the uh, nuances of the position just a sophomore here on senior day in Lincoln Nebraska you know sometimes it's easy to trivialize senior day David you've been through it I've been through it as an athlete you think sometimes when it's your last game there's a real seminal moment of finality that really grips you. No, you it, can't it, understate that, it, overstate that. It hits you. And what you remember about it is the emotion, but also you remember just how quickly those four or five years went. I mean, they're gone in a heartbeat. For Colorado, there are some 22 seniors playing in their final game here, and for Nebraska, 19 of them playing their final home game. Let's see where they spot the football. Yeah, okay, right around the 43 44. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down on the 20 yard line, fourth and four. Please reset the game clock to three minutes and 39 seconds. Now that is a that is a tough break for Dan Hawkins in Colorado. I really believe Williams had the ball long enough along the sidelines, had two feet down, then progressed out of bounds when Andre Jones made the hit. And on a big play, a great play by their junior quarterback, Bernard Jackson, to get that ball outside into the sideline down the football field. Delalo to punt, standing at his own seven yard line as Jackson watches from the sidelines. And that is Nate Swift at his own 35 for Nebraska. Fifth punt of the day for Delalo, a high spiral. Nice punt. Driving Swift all the way back to the 32 yard line. And we're going to stay right here. A 43 yard punt by Delalo. Well, tomorrow night, the Trojans battle the Fighting Irish at the Coliseum in Los Angeles in the latest installment of one of college football's greatest rivalries. Once again, this game will have a huge BCS impact. And after last year's finish, uh, boy, how do you top that one? Maybe they will. Saturday Night Football on ABC, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Remington. Tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. College football lives here. Brandon Jackson on the carry. And he got stuck at the 36 yard line by Dyson. Not after a nice gain. And uh, now time for our IBM Star Watch. Uh, looking at some of the quasars we'll see on the field tomorrow. A pretty talented group outside. Steve Smith, really the most complete receiver. Dwayne Jarrett, the big play specialist outside. John David Booty, not making people forget about Matt Leinert, but he stepped in pretty impressive numbers and he's been dead on down the stretch here in November for USC. Tough to outdo Notre Dame and USC the way they played a year ago, but who knows in that rivalry. Second down and five coming up. Jackson getting to the corner. Got a nice block on the edge. His forward progress is going to be marked at about the 45-yard line, which is more than enough for a Nebraska first down. He picked up eight. Well, here's a look at our ESPNU All-State standings review with that game, Notre Dame-USC, coming up tomorrow night. Uh, the 
big question out there is will there be a rematch between Ohio State and Michigan or if USC wins and if they win impressively how does that impact the standings? Well all the experts the computer experts tell us that USC if they beat Notre Dame and UCLA they'll be in the game. The strange thing is all the experts are non football people <laughs> at this level. Zach Taylor buying time. Hard hit. Right around midfield. But Mueller able to stay on his feet. What a blow delivered by Ryan Walter. Yeah, that was a big collision. A lot of collisions down on field level tonight. But Mark, you know, we we have guys at ESPN and ABC experts like Kirk Herbstreet and Todd Blackledge, our guys back in the studio. I, and, and they're all saying, you know what? We got to talk to our computer people to find out how this is all going to shake out. And, I, and, and to me, you got non-football, non-football experts that are telling us who could potentially be in that national title game. Something's got to give. It's like algebra, solve for X. <laughs> Marlon Luffy's uh, play whistle dead. Hey, plug it into the equation and see what the old computer spits out, huh? Ball start offense number 87. Five yard penalty, second down. Well, the intention of the BCS is to match one against number two. That's the mission, that's the objective. If number one and number two just happen to be Michigan and Ohio State again, and it's a rematch, I guess so be it. Well, but how, how do you decide between USC and Michigan and Florida and granted those teams at least two of those teams have opportunities to lose down the stretch but how how can you discern between those three teams and say hey one of those three gets to play in a national title the other two play in, in, in meaningless you know consolation games I don't like it second and ten Taylor steps up it's complete at the 35 yard line to Terrence Nunn who soared high to make the catch and hung on after taking the hit to pick up 19 yards. Well, Zach Taylor flashed some arm strength on this throw. I think he has the ability to play at the next level. And he doesn't have great speed, but he shows mobility. You know, he's, he's gifted at making that first pass rusher that shows miss, and he can make all the throws down the football field. He says it took him about six months to really understand and grasp Bill Callahan's West Coast offense, and he's done a nice job of running the show since. First down and 10. Jackson hands it off on the reverse. That's Purify. And Maurice Purify is brought down at the 35 yard line, and Bonnie has more. Taylor, of course, has Nebraska's career passing record, and I asked him if that was anywhere on his goal chart when he came here from Butler Community College. He said, Records? He said, I'll. He said, all I wanted to do was get into the starting lineup. Now, remember, Zach initially went to Wake Forest, didn't really get a chance to play there for two years. And he said, after that experience, I just wondered if I had the ability to play D1 ball at all. Well, sure enough, he has. And the nice thing, Mark, is he's, he's really maintained his humility about the situation. He says, look, I know I got the record because they've run the option here for years and years, and it's a run-oriented offense. And soon enough, the next guy who's going to come in here after me is going to break my record, and nobody's going to even remember who I am. Well, he knows it might be coming. <laughs> it is a new day and age. They don't run the option much here anymore. So Callahan will always remember the exploits of Taylor with passes like that, which could have been caught by Terrence Nunn. Instead, it's incomplete with 16 seconds to go in the third quarter. Second and 19 coming up. Well, this was a Sunday quality ball from Zach Taylor. And with the naked eye, looked like Nunn should have held on to this football. Once again, great work up front. Taylor clean in the pocket. And that's a drop. Jay Norvell, their offensive coordinator, made a trip to Butler, Kansas Community College to visit the quarterback, Zach Taylor, back a couple of years ago when they were recruiting him. Went through an NFL-style interview process with him, answered a whole bunch of questions Zach Taylor did, and then finally he asked the quarterback, you told me everything you love about the game. What do you hate about the game? Taylor said, I hate to lose. And Taylor completes this pass to Nate Swift who's pushed out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. You always love to hear it when your quarterback likes to lose, David. Well, and he showed 
his willingness to win a game with the North Division on the line two weeks ago. I happened to be there at Kyle Field for that one, and such an impressive drive. He hit a fourth and three to Todd Peterson. Of course, the touchdown on the jump ball fade to Maurice Purify, but some anxious moments for Bill Callahan down the stretch. You know, no guarantees you're going to come into this game and beat Colorado. Zach Taylor, in my mind, really came of age. The maturation process continues. Third and ten, there's a flag down. Taylor looking to get bailed out for Purify, and it's knocked down at the five-yard line, and another flag is down at the five. In the vicinity of Terry Washington. Well, the first flag, I believe, is going to go against the Huskers. Purify just came back to try to break an interception up on that play. He might have drawn a defensive pass interference call. You know, if he did, this would be another shot. Two fouls on the play, one on each team. Pass interference, defense number 25. Holding on the offense, number 76. The penalties cancel, third down. Another shot. An untimed down to finish off the period, yes. and that was a heck of a play by Maurice Purify to come back and make the effort to break that play up. And in the process, he drew a flag on Lionel Harris, the safety. Pays never to give up on it. That's the moral of that story. Well, and here's Purify coming back. This is a, a poor throwing decision from Zach Taylor. Yeah, Washington wasn't even looking at the ball. And it didn't look to me like there was a lot of contact there. That was a, <laughs> that was a call that was in the gray area. And Lionel Harris, the safety for the Buffs, can't be real excited about that flag. Right? He's still, still upset about the call. They'll play third and ten again at the 36-yard line. Three receivers out to the top of your screen. Purify lined up to the bottom of your screen. Taylor escapes, and it's incomplete at 23. Fourth and 10 coming up. Terrace Wheatley breaking that pass up. He's the fastest defensive back that they have in Colorado, and he usually covers the best opposing receiver. Three quarters in the books. Nebraska and Colorado, a storied rivalry. Our presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Look at our aviators who performed the flyover prior to the opening kickoff. Oh, nice work. Got a buffalo in the bunch. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> We're trying to take care of him. We get ready for the start of the fourth quarter. Nebraska leading by seven points in a highly competitive game. Frankly, a game that many people thought would be lopsided in Nebraska's favor. They bring out the field goal unit, and they're going to try and pooch it. Pooch punt. Will they get to down it in time? We'll wait for the signal from the official. And it's going to be downed at the one yard line. Great coverage by Barry Turner. Again, wonderful work on special teams. Last time on the trick play on special teams, he caught a touchdown pass. This time, he downs it at the one. Are you kidding me? I mean, first, he catches a touchdown ball from the backup quarterback on a specialty play and then the speed and the body control to make the play on the football we see defensive backs on sundays at the nfl level screw up that play <laughs> time in and time out you get a big defensive end down the field and he's that nimble to make the play what a play by turner all this in the wake of blocking a potential game-winning field goal last week by texas a m mel holiday in a tailback Colorado 99 yards away and that's going to be a safety they got the deuce McEwen and character on the sack and the margin now swells to nine which is vital because now they need it twice to catch up. Adam Carricker, the defensive end. 
And I'm pretty well convinced he's going to go in the first round come springtime. That big frame, long neck. Really the most dominant defensive end for the Huskers since Grant Wistrom in the late 90s. And then the reaction. And it was set up by the hustle from that guy, Barry Turner, on special teams work on the prior play. That's Two. the first safety of the season for the Cornhuskers. Two defensive ends making key plays. First Turner and then Carricker getting inside with the penetration. That's a great way to start the fourth quarter if you're a Cornhusker booster. 14-22 to go in the fourth period. Dan Hawkins' team with the free kick now. And they'll have to kick it away. Eighty-five thousand eight hundred on hand. A new stadium record here at Memorial Stadium. Clad in red. Not a great kick either. Out of the thirty-five, it's Jackson on the return. And Jackson now to the 42-yard line as we go back to John Saunders in New York. Mark in the Pontiac, game-changing performance of the day. Trinden Holiday, 92 yards on this kickoff return for LSU as they knock off Arkansas right before the SEC championship game. To vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance, log on to ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. All right, John, and uh, we can only selfishly hope that We'll have a Pontiac game-changing moment, too, coming up soon. You never know. First down and 10 for Nebraska at the 41-yard line. Taylor. And he throws it away out of bounds. Under some heat there. Wisely got rid of it. Brad Jones was in heavy pursuit. First-year starter. The faster improving players on that Colorado Buffalo team, 6'4 sophomore. He'll come out of the ball game, second and ten coming up for Nebraska. Nebraska already with a ticket punch to the conference championship next week. The game you'll see on ABC. Presented by Dr. Pepper. Second down and ten. makes the catch and in space he can make you miss lunging forward close to the first down marker before being brought down by Terry Washington Maurice Purify last week had a huge week made the game winning touchdown catch and go back to that catch against Texas A&M first and goal on the seven yard line Nebraska picked up a big roughing the passer call against Zach Taylor to keep that drive alive but the confidence that Bill Callahan had to underthrow a fade ball, a jump ball, wow. fade in the end zone. The confidence in an athlete to go up and make that play with the game on the line. First and 10. Underneath out of the backfield, Jackson. Nice move. Brought down near the 40 yard line. And let's go down to Bonnie. Talking about Purify, Mark, we had spoken with his mom up in the stands a little bit ago. Obviously important because this is a rivalry game, but very significant for Mo to play well today because his mother was in the stands. She's had very few opportunities to watch him play throughout his career. The last time she watched him was the USC game week three of the season. It was the only game this year that he was shut out entirely. So this game he thought would be a shot at redemption in front of his mother. Yeah, doing a nice job so far, Bonnie, with three catches. Two of them on their last scoring drive. A pitch into the boundary. It's Jackson again. And he's brought down nicely by Boy Doe. About two yards short of the first down. Well, Nebraska's offense, I think, has been helped by Taylor's ability to find Purify here in the second half. And you know, the big difference between college football as a, as a quarterback and, and the pro level, you're not always going to have wide receivers open at the NFL level. And, and that's why scouts really look at Purify, the big receiver, a receiver that can make catches when he's covered. I think Purify is going to be a, a bona fide, you know, first or second round pick in the draft when he comes out. Third and one, play fake. Taylor has time, but nobody open. Jackson drops it. 
And it's fourth down coming up. Colorado stayed home. They did not buy the play fake that Zach Taylor was selling. And it's fourth down and one. Nice job by the Buffaloes staying at home. And they've done a pretty nice job throughout this football game disrupting things for Zach Taylor in the backfield. You know, Taylor's made some throws down the field, but Colorado's been able to get to him just enough to create a lack of comfort for Zach Taylor in the pocket. Boy, one thing for certain, you can't sleep on their special teams, and they try and catch Colorado napping here on fourth and one. Will they snap it, though? Zach Taylor walks off to the side, and they snap it directly to the tailback, and they get the first down. What a surprise. Tier Green, the starting safety, gets the first down for the Cornhuskers. You cannot nap on their special teams. Callahan open up the entire box of tricks today. And he's using defensive players to make plays. Taylor's going to walk off. <laughs> and then the direct snap to Tier Green. They sent him in motion, but it was more of a distraction. And it caught Colorado Nappy. They converted twice on fourth down today. Jackson upended at the 31-yard line by Billingsley who came in for run support from a strong safety spot. A lot of people talking about what's on the line for Nebraska this week. I think a better bowl game potentially, depending on what happens in the Big 12 championship game. But watch the play again here. You know, Zach Taylor's going to walk out like he has to talk to the coaching <laughs> staff, and then the direct snap catches Colorado asleep. But I think because this game does not determine them getting into the Big 12 championship game, Callahan can afford to roll the dice, and he has rolled the dice more than once. Yeah, interesting philosophical approach coming into this one. Showing your hand. Second and eight. Taylor he took a hit after he let go of it back at the 40-yard line. And a good blow delivered by Sibley. And Bill Callahan talked about Zach Taylor and comparing him to Rich Gannon, the quarterback that that took Callahan's team to the Super Bowl back in 2002. And Bill Callahan feels that Zach Taylor has a few more throws in his bag of tricks than, than even Gannon had. And, and, and I also think that you've got a quarterback here in Taylor, Mark, that is underrated in terms of his mobility. Moves pretty well in some of the situations he's been forced into today. Third and eight coming up. A little motion up front. Ball start offense. This one going against the Cornhuskers, and uh, that won't please Bill Callahan too much. But he points to the fact that last year, their road to success actually started in the Alamo Bowl game, the victory over Michigan. That gave them a lot of confidence and momentum coming into spring ball. And they were able to capitalize on that early in the season. You know, seven and five Michigan team, but Bill Callahan made the point that that was really a BCS quality team in their minds, and and Michigan, they've proven that this year. Third and thirteen after the penalty. Taylor complete underneath at the 18-yard line. It's Franz Hardy, and he has the first down. An 18-yard pickup on the play, and Zach Taylor threw a dart. And like two weeks ago, down at College Station, Zach Taylor starting to pick up momentum in the passing game as the game goes on. Hardy with the crossing route. The ball comes out with great timing. And I love the action in the backfield by Zach Taylor. He keeps that back foot loaded, and the ball's coming out with some velocity. He's 17 of 25 today. Looking into the end zone, has a man. Touchdown. Jackson. Jackson has been so important, so vital for Nebraska today. Receiving, running, blocking in all aspects of this game. 
team's leading rusher coming in with his second touchdown reception this season. And this one might have helped put it out of reach for Nebraska. And Zach Taylor still rewriting that record book. Back with more after this. Turn left. Turn clockwise. Over. Turn under. Turn left at intersection. Destination ahead. Navigate. I'm CW2 Schultz, and all of us here from the Colorado and Nebraska National Guard wish we could be home with all our friends and family. But until we are, go Buffs, go Huskers, and we'll be home soon. All right, guys, hope you come home safe and keep up the great work protecting all of our interests overseas. Nebraska leading 30 to 14 in the midst of a 16 to nothing run after that last touchdown catch by Brandon Jackson. This game seemed to turn on that safety a few moments ago. Charles on the kickoff return for the Buffalo stopped up at the 21 yard line. One more look at that touchdown catch by Jackson. Well Jackson's going to be in the backfield here man to man coverage from Washington and Washington's going to get picked off by the outside receiver France Hardy. Go ahead and freeze it right there. And Washington gets picked off and that leaves Jackson free on the wheel route. Another perfectly thrown ball by Taylor. But the meshing action between the running back and the wide receiver Hardy created an open tailback down the football field. That last touchdown pass tied him with the great Tommy Frazier on the Nebraska all time list. Jackson fires a dart complete at the 36 yard line for Crawford and Crawford was a big part of their success in their last win against Iowa State in their last game first down and 10 coming up 941 to go in the fourth quarter Colorado came in here two and five in conference two and nine overall they said hey this is our bowl game if we could spoil Nebraska's trip to the conference championship game that would be great but right now that's a long ways away. 941 to go. Ellis tried to cut it up inside and stopped up at the line of scrimmage at the 35. Ellis is six foot 210 pound junior. We've seen Charles, we've seen Holiday, we've seen Ellis today. And Jackson, though, is the second leading rusher on this Colorado team behind Hugh Charles. And it's really the lack of talent at wide receiver that that takes Colorado out of a comfort zone down 16 points with nine minutes to go in the game. I mean, you got walk ons like Holtz and Crawford playing and Dan Hawkins. The cupboard is bare at that position and they're going to have to reload. They've had to shear down their offense some 45 50 percent. Pass complete had enough offense there to Barnett. Alvin Barnett making the catch on the play the transfer from Northeast Oklahoma A&M last season Barnett's played well in, in November and and he's gotten some help on the other side from Patrick Williams but you look at this team coming into this game two and nine they didn't get a touchdown reception from a wide out until game 11 game number 11 two weeks ago against Iowa State almost unheard of at the college level third and four and since the first quarter Colorado was converted only one third down Jackson going to do it himself or try to which he does successfully first down in Nebraska's 46 yard line and with 813 to go Shanley making the stop I would have liked to have seen more of this throughout the football game I think Bernard Jackson is one of the most dangerous quarterbacks with the football in his hands that you see in college football and I would have liked to have seen a couple more planned play calls in the huddle for the quarterback look at his numbers on the day and he is smothered and sacked back at the 45 by character Adam character nicknamed 
AC by his teammates with a little DC direct current that time. Yeah, he is a manimal. I mean, he is a beast <laughs> at defensive end. And when they move him down inside, they bring Turner in at defensive end. You got Moore and Turner on the edge, and then you got Carricker with a man-to-man -man assignment inside. That is a load for any offensive guard. Second and 19 after the sack. Jackson escapes. Not much room pushed out of bounds at midfield at the 50. Let's go downstairs to Bonnie. We've seen Nebraska play some relentless football on defense. Mark, you had talked about how the Alamo Bowl sort of helped give this team a jump start on the 06 season, but they kind of hit a rut midseason when there were back-to-back -back losses, a heartbreaker to Texas, then a surprising loss to Oklahoma State, and that's what players consider the turnaround. In that Oklahoma State game, they were winning. They gave up three fourth-quarter touchdowns, and Jay Moore was saying the coaches reamed us out after that, and that's what helped us return to our focus, and we been relentless ever since. Uh, the uh, coaches and players have really formed some nice bonds here, especially Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator, with that defensive unit as they hold on this sequence, the pass intended for Cody Crawford. You talk about Cosgrove, there he is on the sideline. You know, you can trace a lot of the defense's success to their chemistry and some of the summer days spent at uh, Coach Cosgrove's uh, house. The defense showing up on mass, uh, swimming, barbecuing. That's a big cookout, David. I'll show, I'll show up for that. I'll show up for a barbecue. <laughs> and his, his players do great impersonations of him, too, I'm told. Well, this defensive front four for Nebraska, you know, they impersonate a pass rush big time. It, the defensive ends for this team combined with the Gundaro and Cryer inside, really tough to handle for an offensive line. On fourth and 14, Swift feels it cleanly at the 17-yard line. Nothing on the return on the 34-yard punt. Does Colorado have anything left? We'll find out when we come back. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Wrap up the wow this holiday season, only at Best Buy. Pontiac, go online to vote for this week's Pontiac game-changing performance. City Premier Pass credit card, rewarding, very, very, very rewarding. And Remington Titanium Shavers. Under the lights here at Memorial Stadium, I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie and Bonnie Bernstein under seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Nebraska in the midst of a 16 to nothing run to break this game open. Jackson stopped up behind the line of scrimmage. Several guys there to meet him on the play. Nebraska coming into this game eight and three overall looking to improve to nine and three on their way to Kansas City to play in the Big 12 championship game presented by Dr. Pepper next week in Kansas City. They've shown some of their hand in the process, but that might be a good thing because Zach Taylor is all that and then some. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Memorial Stadium. And uh, yeah, we hope Uncle Jeremy is watching as well in Iraq. And we send out our support to all the troops overseas. Second down and nine. Nebraska their own 17. Zach Taylor's had a hot hand today, but that pass batted down. David, we've talked about it a little bit already and alluded to the fact that Nebraska has done some things that we haven't seen so far from them this season. What do you think about that approach as they head towards the Big 12 championship game to take on either Oklahoma or Texas? Well, there's two schools of thought. Sometimes you want to keep those in the bag for a, for a bigger game, but I think this game directly influences how big a bowl game Nebraska will get into, win or lose in that Big 12 championship game. So, uh, you know, you can't leave anything in your holster when you're trying to come up with a win against Colorado this afternoon. Third down and long. Pass complete. Swift pushed out of bounds uh, just short 
of the first down marker. So uh, I guess when you're considering Nebraska and you mentioned bowl games, then you obviously have to factor in the point that these fans travel really well too, don't they? No, that, that is a factor. And even if you win the Big 12 championship game, you know, the, the Bulls can pick and choose between teams. Nebraska, they have always traveled well, so they're a very attractive team. Nebraska Cornhuskers coming into this game at uh, eight and three. Bill Callahan says that uh, none of this would have been possible this year without the stellar work of his starting quarterback, Zach Taylor. And Zach Taylor and the offense still out on fourth down and one. Well, they snap it though. Timeout, Nebraska. First time out of the half. Cornhuskers call a timeout. And we'll take one right along with them with six and a half minutes to go. Zach Taylor put together a very solid game. We'll be back after this. Welcome back, everyone. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Mel Holiday with a 45-yard burst to get Colorado back in the ball game at that point. But Brandon Jackson took it into the end zone, and that kind of got things rolling. The safety made it a nine-point game. Character doing it. And then Jackson with a reception for a touchdown. And that's where we stand right now, 30 to 14. The Cornhuskers leading Colorado. The visiting team had won the last four times in this rivalry, but uh, well, we'll see what they do here. Nebraska on fourth down. They bring in the punt unit. Back here. Chase McBride is standing at his own 33. Calls for the fair catch. 44-yard punt, nothing on the return. David, tomorrow, big game. Oklahoma takes on Oklahoma State. Your thoughts on that? Well, who would have thought that Texas would lose their last two regular season games to put the Longhorns in this position? And Oklahoma better not be sleeping when they head into Oklahoma State in that football game. That is a dangerous offensive team that Oklahoma State puts out on the football field. A Darius Bowman at wideout, one of the best receivers across the country that a lot of people haven't heard of. And this here on the field, a bit of a test for Nebraska. They've been criticized in those last several weeks for not being able to put teams away when they've had the opportunity. Right now they lead by 16 with a little under six and a half to go. I think we're getting a challenge here from Bill Callahan. And I'm not quite sure what he's challenging. If you're Colorado, you're down 16 points. This is a two score game, two touchdowns, two two point con conversions. They have timeouts. Yeah, this game was tied at 14 apiece. Now, this is plenty of time for Colorado if they can put together a clock drive here. And clock drives don't al always come with two minutes to go in a football game. The Buffaloes will be in no huddle status. Coming out on first down here with a little over six minutes to go. Well, the thing that, uh, as you alluded to earlier, might hurt them in a case like this is, in terms of the passing variable and dimension, they don't have what they really need at this point. Alvin Barnett, Patrick Williams, Cody Crawford, their three main receivers. But their head coach, uh, Coach Hawkins, will fill that cupboard up, no doubt, in subsequent years and get this thing looking like it was when he was at Boise State. Because that's the type of offense that he's really looking to, to have on the field ultimately. Bill Callahan, you know, he uh, has had a nice touch with his team this year. To break up some of the monotony of two days in training camp earlier this year, he brought in a uh, comedian, Dan Whitney, actually, the comedian on television from that cable guy, and uh, kind of broke up the team with a little uh, stand up. Took the edge off a of training camp a little bit. Part of the part of the nuances of coaching, David. And what they're challenging right now is whether there were 12 men on the field for Colorado. Count it up, David. Well, I'm getting a little old, but let's see if I can <laughs> uh, go ahead and count the white jerseys. At least in the frame here, five. That I, I count nine. There's one more engaged over there, down by the 20-yard line. Yeah, I don't see 12 players on the field, at least in that framing. Of course, you got the return man, but that's 11. Well, Canadian that's... football, that's cool, but... <laughs> 
I think can't that's, do that south of the 49th parallel. That's probably what this challenge is about. Callahan. Let me see. Let's count them up again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the return men is 11, unless there's another one beyond the 40 yard line. Yeah, I only, right. count, I only count 11 on the field, including the return man. And sometimes on these challenges, you don't get an announcement from the referee as to what the coaches are contesting. Yeah, unless someone was running off the field. You know, who knows? Now one, of the, one of the interesting rule changes this year, the, the flag. The challenge that there were 12 players on the field for Colorado. However, the play stands is called. Nebraska's charged with a timeout. Well, there's the definitive call. Well, it looked like there were 11 players on, on the field there. One of the interesting rule changes has been the challenge, and not many coaches have challenged this year because every play is being reviewed by the officials right. upstairs. We saw that almost pretty much cost Miami a game in a game we did against Virginia Tech several weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, why, why have a challenge when every play is being reviewed? Anyway, Jackson almost threw an interception at the 45-yard line. Tier Green. Almost had himself a pick. Green, of course, the cousin of Mel Holiday, the starting tailback. Green had an opportunity on that play to lock up a nine-win regular season for Nebraska. Second and ten. You know, this is plenty of time here for Colorado. Now they haven't shown a lot of ability to move the ball through the air, but with their timeouts and down two scores, still time. ten. Well, the pressure coming. The pass completed the three-yard line to Cody Crawford. He's the guy that puts Jackson in his comfort zone. He makes the catch for the first down. Monday night, Rick Favre and the Packers take on Sean Alexander and the NFC West leading Seattle Seahawks. Alexander back in the fold. Is it Monday yet? Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern and also available in high definition on ESPN HD. That pass incomplete near midfield. Jackson said, hey, beating Nebraska is one of our team goals. It's not in red letters like it used to be, but it's still a goal. Of course, uh, under the prior regime, it was written up on that board in big red letters, but uh, Coach Hawkins has de-emphasized it a little bit, taking the approach that every game is important, but I'm not sure that the players see it that way. Second and ten. Jackson on the move in a rush and brought down at midfield at the 50 yard line by Steinkuhler. He picked up six on the play. Well, that's a nice decision by Jackson to pull the football down. Clock is moving, but you, know, you look in the secondary, the Colorado receivers just not getting much separation against the secondary. Out of the shotgun, Jackson to operate. Pass is complete to Barnett. Runs out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That's five and a half minutes to go. And Colorado still with two timeouts. And five, and a, five and a half minutes to go, and you're you're operating just outside the 45-yard line. You know, Jackson just has to concentrate on throwing the ball beyond the first down stakes. Don't take a sack. And you can score in a hurry in college football. Bit of an acid test for this black shirts group. The Nebraska defense, as they're affectionately known as. Can they close it out? That's been their weak spot, and Jackson overshoots his receiver and might have thrown that one away intentionally. Well, I think he did throw that ball away intentionally, but he had a nice void back towards the line of scrimmage. I think Jackson has been a little bit hesitant to pull the football down, and, and that's really a strong card for this offense, Jackson. for Colorado. Jackson became the starter for the Colorado team uh, after the Colorado State game, which was the uh, second game of the season. They lost their opener, and then Jackson took over, and uh, well, he's been singled out by Dan Hawkins as one of the guys that's improved the most on this team throughout the course of the year. He's 10 of 20 today. Under duress, there's a flag down, and Jackson safely scoots out of bounds at the 41. He picked up five, but will it stand? Holding call on Colorado. Holding 77 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. 
That's against Tyler Columbus, number 77 right there, one of the top two offensive linemen this year for Colorado with 5.18 to go in the fourth quarter. Columbus having a tough time working against Carriker. Carriker can rush you two different ways. The speed rush outside, that was a route he took against Columbus on that play, but he also has the strength to bull rush you. And a pretty darn good defensive end against the run. He's an every down defensive end at the next level. At, at 6'6", six, six, too. Yeah, yeah, and, and the size, the ability to play the pass and the run, he's gonna have scouts salivating. Second and 20. Flag down, looked like there was a little motion at the top of the offensive line, Jack Tipton for Colorado. And you mentioned uh, Grant Wistrom. There's been a long line of good defensive ends here at Number 94 Nebraska. on the defense was in the neutral zone causing a reaction by the offense. That's offside defense, five yard penalty, second down. Let's go downstairs to Bonnie. Mark Hawkins identified Bernard as uh, one of the most improved, but still not necessarily a ringing endorsement as for his position at quarterback next year. He said, honestly, I've never run as simple of an offense as I did this year, even in high school, and it was like he was still going through football 101. If Bernard has his choice, he definitely wants to be back there behind center again next year. Well, he'll have the entire benefit of a full training camp, at least, which he's never had until this year. Jackson under duress and brought down at the 40 yard line with 506 to go in the fourth quarter. That's well, going to be an interesting quarterback battle in spring for Colorado. Dan Hawkins, of course, his son Cody Hawkins is redshirting this year as a freshman. And it's going to be open season between Jackson and Hawkins. Jackson's a pretty highly touted high school quarterback coming out of Boise. Jackson will be a senior next year. Blitz coming. The pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Andrew Shanley was there to knock it down. He was coming on the pressure. Fourth and five coming up for the Buffaloes. Well, to keep this clock drive alive, I think Jackson has to consider using his feet. You take a look downfield, and I think if Bernard were a little bit more willing to pull the football down and to use his legs against this defense, this Colorado offense would have had more success throughout the course of this football game. Fourth and five. And a potential moment of clarity coming up for the Black Shirts. They couldn't get to Jackson, but it's incomplete. At the 33, the Cornhuskers take over on downs. Crawford couldn't squeeze it. And Jackson put it right there. Looked like a good pass. Looked like Bo Rude. And Bo Rude coming from his outside linebacker position on the blitz. And that break was timed pretty well by Grixby. Here comes Rude straight up the gut. Forced Bernard to get rid of the ball just to count early. First down and 10 coming back the other way and Nebraska now feeling a little bit more comfortable about their position. Leading by 16 points. Brandon Jackson has done yeoman work today out of the backfield. Running, caught a touchdown pass, takes this one out to the 45, and Zach Taylor tied Tommy Frazier on the all-time touchdown passing list for the touchdown pass earlier. Colorado using their first of their final two timeouts. I don't think we're going to see Zach Taylor put the ball up again in this football game. It's a matter of working the clock, yeah. keeping the ball on the ground. Look at those numbers and interesting story, folks. This past Wednesday, earlier this week, Nebraska football players and Andy Cadaby and Jordan Congdon hosted a group of students from the Nebraska Center for the Education of Children who are blind or visually impaired. Andy and Jordan gave the kids a tour of the football facilities. Really great stuff. And it ended, it culminated with the students being introduced onto the field of Memorial Stadium visualizing perhaps what it would be like to be a player and running onto the field. Uh, that, is, uh, that is a special deal and we don't see enough of that. You know, sometimes we tend to feature on the negatives off the field and we don't celebrate the positives in college football. Here's what Cadaby had to say about the experience for the kids. 
it was just great to see the smiles on their faces. They walked around and uh, got to walk around the locker room and the weight room and everything. And um, just again to just show them that people care, people are uh, interested, and uh, and that again the they can achieve things and that they shouldn't be held back just because of um, a disability they have. Sometimes we look at these athletes as just that, but they are much more than that, folks. And a nice burst over the right side. Brandon Jackson on the move and pushed out of bounds finally. But he picked up a nice chunk of real estate there with four minutes to go. You got to consider him now when you start talking about MVPs of the game for Nebraska. Well, and teams that are going to play Nebraska, whether it's Oklahoma or Texas in the Big 12 title game, and then their bowl opponent, potentially a BCS bowl opponent, they're going to have to start concentrating on this team and stopping them on the ground. Because if you don't slow down this Nebraska Cornhusker rushing attack, too much balance, too much ability to throw, use play action, and use the arm of Zach Taylor. First down and 10 coming up. The backs line up out of the eye. He picked up 31. Jackson did on the last run. Cadavy, of course, partially blind in one eye, and we asked one of the children as part of that experience what it was like. Here's what he had to say. It was really, really good. It, it was a... It was a very unique experience. Nebraska is my favorite, favorite uh, college football team, and and you see, you see, I like it so much I can't even tell tell you how much I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Jonathan? There are about eighty-five thousand of your closest friends sitting in the stadium. They, they agree, agree with you. you. They agree with them wholeheartedly. Look at Cadaby, uh, as we mentioned, uh, visually impaired himself. Well, and you you look over the years, the great teams in Nebraska, Devaney, Osborne, five national titles between the two of them, and, and, the, and the crowds that have shown up here in Lincoln, they might not be the loudest at night, might not be the zaniest crowd you'll see on a Saturday, and, and certainly not the best in terms of noise level, but when you talk about class, this is a this is a crowd, if you win in Lincoln as an opposing team, this crowd stands up and they applaud your effort. I don't see that anywhere else on Saturday. <laughs> Look at the sea of red here at Memorial Stadium, Tom Osborne Field, 3.54 to go. Nebraska looking at a potential matchup against either Texas or Oklahoma. And before this one's over, partner, I want to ask you about how the two different teams match up against uh, Nebraska and who do you think they might have a better chance against or whether it really matters. Some happy people in Norman, Oklahoma tonight, no that's doubt. for sure. Brandon Jackson stopped up at the 23-yard uh, line. Jackson with his fourth 100-yard rushing game this season. And uh, what do you think about next week's matchup? I'm not sure I'd want to see that Oklahoma Sooners defense right now. I mean, that is one of the true tests in college football right now is, is, is going up against Bob Stoops' defense. Get a look at Arrowhead Stadium. That'll be the venue next weekend. December 2nd game you'll see right here on ABC third down and nine coming up for Nebraska you really have to marvel at the way that Bill Callahan has turned this thing around in just three years Jackson brought down at the 17 yard line and uh, a lot of it due in part to their quarterback Zach Taylor and the West Coast offense it was interesting how Taylor when he's being interviewed in the recruiting process by Nebraska, he was able to break down his offense at Butler Community College in an hour after being there for just a few months, really. And that really impressed the coaching staff of Nebraska. And that really convinced them that he might be their guy. It takes a lot of cerebral variables to run this West Coast offense. Well, and, and you look at his touchdown interception ratio. That's what jumps out at you. 24 touchdowns and only four interceptions. That is a special statistic for Zach Taylor. On the toss. And Jackson got the first down. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John Belated, happy Thanksgiving to you. Same to you, Mark. This is the Sports Center in game. Ryan Leaf goes 26 yards to Jordan Kent. They trail by one. All they have to do is kick it and tie the game and think overtime, but no. Leaf runs it in for two points out, and they have the lead. Mark. 
<laughs> what, what, were those cricket jerseys that Oregon was wearing? It looked like a cricket match. <laughs> I mean, they will have some funky, funky gear, boy. <laughs> That's that Phil Knight dollar speaking. What you know. is going on in Eugene? That's that Nike dollar speaking. <laughs> First down and 10. It looked like rollerball. <laughs> James Kahn, Brandon Jackson. A bowling ball between the tackles down to the eight yard line. Under two minutes to go as Jackson continues to add to his total today. Brandon Jackson, a five foot 11, 200 pound junior. How about you, partner, breaking out a roller ball on me? Jonathan E. <laughs> <laughs> James Kahn, one of his best. Yeah, if Jimmy were watching right now, he'd be proud of you. <laughs> Reaching way back into the 70s on that one. Uh, Brandon Jackson has had a great day down to the field, a young man that carries around. Uh, Polaroid of his late father Charles as inspiration passed away when Brandon was 10 years old. Says that it helps him get through each and every game, each and every day, each and every practice. He tapes it to his locker before every game and looks at it and meditates, gets his head straight. It's helped him today. Well, and Bill Callahan, you look back on this season, and yeah, they really had an opportunity late to beat Texas. They led Oklahoma State by 17 points. And this Nebraska team could easily be riding a one loss season. The only team that really controlled them throughout the course of this year, USC out at the Coliseum. And early in the season, too. Yeah, very early. Third down and four. Don't forget tomorrow night. Speaking of USC, they take on Notre Dame. Prime time on ABC. Toss into the boundary. That's Kenny Wilson. Nice move by Wilson. Cash money, Kenny Wilson with the score. Just like back in the day, is a talented stable of running backs. Lucky, Jackson, Wilson, and Glenn. But this time it was Wilson's turn. Wilson would not be denied. I mean, how about this intensity? Wilson with his fourth rushing touchdown this season. And Nebraska now leading 37 to 14. And when Nebraska had to become much more enterprising and make some plays to put the opponent away, they were able to do it, unlike in previous weeks at times. Well, they finally sealed the deal. Let's take one more look. Watch the physical style of running by Mr. Wilson here, and then he just absolutely levels Lionel Harris, the safety in the end zone. I mean, just lowers the boom on Harris about three yards deep into the paint. Harris will think twice about that next time. That'll rattle, rattle your feelings a little bit. And Kenny Wilson hasn't been getting many carries, I and mean, you can't help but think, hey, a little frustration. A little frustration was taken out on a couple Colorado Buffalo defenders on that run. Kenny Wilson, like his quarterback, out of Butler, Kansas Community College. Bill Callahan has really uh, tapped nicely into the junior college scene. When you look at Purify and Wilson and Zach Taylor, a few other players on this Nebraska team, Big Red is back. I don't think there's any doubt. The Cornhusker Nation seeing a comprehensive and complete game on both sides of the ball from their team today. And don't forget tomorrow night, a huge one in prime time on ABC. Notre Dame against USC. And Callahan gets the Gatorade bath and shower as his team will improve to nine and three. Jordan Dyson, the Chevrolet player of the game. Brandon Jackson earning the award for Nebraska. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Jackson with 142 yards. Jackson with one last gasp effort, and there's a flag down on the play. With no time left. Are they going to rule it a pick? Yeah, they're going to rule it a pick, but I think Jay Moore, the defensive end for Nebraska, was offside. 
And have one more play. Holding 66 on the offense, offside, 44 defense, penalties cancel, will extend for one play. Don't leave. <laughs> Added pleasure. <laughs> that USC Notre Dame game. Yeah, you know, we we've we've talked about that match. If you go back to that game, Mark, a year if ago. If Reggie Bush doesn't push Matt Leinard from the back, it's a different deal. Well, like how about the fumble year. on the goal line? How yeah. about the fourth and Leinard's 13? Fumble, yeah. Leinard's uh, completion fourth and 13. A national title or potential national title on the line. He hits Jarrett on the fade route. And then if Leinard doesn't fumble at the goal line, the clock expires. Yeah. I don't think that uh, Notre Dame hasn't forgotten all those things. That's going to be a wild one. That's going to be a great football game. Tomorrow night on ABC in prime time. Trent Musburger, Bob Davey, Kirk Herbstreet, and this one is over. Nebraska improves to 9-3 and three overall, and they improve to a picture perfect. 5-0 uh, and oh in the Big 12's North Division. Don't forget in primetime Saturday on ABC, Notre Dame USC at 8. For David Norrie and Bonnie Bernstein, I'm Mark Jones saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska. It has been quite a night for the big red machine. The Cornhuskers winning 37 to 14. Purified doing his part, Jackson doing his part. And after three years, Nebraska will play in the first Big 12 championship game since 1999. Waking the ghosts, the great ones of the past. Coach Callahan deserved that shower. Our final score once again, 37-14, Nebraska. This has been a special presentation of ESPN on ABC.